All right, 17 Live, what's going on? Original Next Level Gaming, my man Stinger. He says, another Sunday, another award-winning Iron Lords podcast coming with a great guest. Yes, Giuseppe has arrived, y'all. He is here with me in a lot. Giuseppe, you can say hello to the people so they can hear you real quick. Hello, everyone. There he is. See, the legend. The le- Very smooth. Very smooth. <laughs> so, yeah, man, we just are uh, waiting for Addict. To- oh, right, cool. Thank you, Iron Mike. Waiting for Addict. King will arrive soon. I'm going to mute when King, because he always comes in with music, and we're not trying to get copyright strike. So, <laughs> we will not do that. Solve is always smooth, late. Yeah, Cat Daddy, man. I see that boss in the prophecy is real nice. Yeah, you know, and, uh, Destiny. That's a great dungeon. All right, y'all. We will see y'all in a bit. Just want to do a little quick mic check, and then we'll get the group in. <laughs> Attic, we're always waiting for Attic. <laughs> Sinister. Yeah, Attic. Attic. Now, Attic was up, man. He wasn't sleeping. What's going on? What's going on? All right, fellas. See you in a bit.
Welcome to the Iron Lords Podcast and the Lords of Gaming.net, episode number 166. And it's another glorious Sunday. We're back at the round table on the Lord's Day. I'm extremely excited about our special guest, and we've got Gears, Tactics, and Splash Damage. Sony invested in Epic Games and Xbox interested in WB Games to discuss, so we're going to get right into it. I want to introduce a Lord who is not only one of the top coders in the games industry, but his extensive programming background has one of the most impressive and diverse resumes to prove it. Introducing the principal gameplay programmer at Splash Damage and developer of the iconic Gears Tactics franchise, a fellow passionate Lord of Retro Gaming and the most fluent speaking Italian on Twitter. Live from the UK by way of Italy and making his debut into the realm of the Lords. My man, Lord Giuseppe Navaria. How you doing, sir? Bro, that was amazing. <laughs> I like that pronunciation. I can learn from you, son. Yeah, that, that pronunciation Thanks. would never come out of my mouth. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> it wouldn't. It would sound. It would. It, it would butcher the name so bad. I would have to just literally just just go. I'd have to vanish off the internet. Like, like I can barely pronounce most English stuff. There's no way I'm going to do that. No, Lord Giuseppe, man, you are a lord. It was spot on. Yeah, oh, I was good. I, I tried. Yeah, I practiced. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. Nice, man. So, how, first of all, you are Lord of your realm, the Lord of coding and programming, man. First of all, how you been doing, man? How you been, how you been holding up with everything? Oh, it's um, I'm I'm doing great, actually. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, there is a, a a lot going on, mm-hmm. and I'm yeah, I'm super happy to be here. Nice, nice. Good to have you. Good to have you. Now, um, real quick, what have you been playing? Have you got a chance to play any games lately? Oh, um, well, right now I'm actually replaying uh, Persona 5. Ooh, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. And then I'm uh, in a sort of um, retro gaming. Uh, okay, street. what are we doing? So, um, so I, well, at, at the moment I'm flip flopping between mm-hmm. um, Edom, it's um, 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 roguelikes. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, Tom and Adam are my go-to roguelikes. Ooh, okay. And uh, and then um, some older stuff. So um, recently, I'm uh, I'm fixing on MSX uh, okay. computer. Okay. I have here, so I'm I've been playing MSX games. A lot of well. MSX yeah. games. Okay. Okay. I yeah. saw I saw the, the the Sega stuff today. The little the little penny and giant. Yeah. You, you brought you had like a throw a retro. Italian commercial for Sega. That was awesome oh, yeah. today. I was, I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, it. that was part of my childhood. Ooh, yeah, awesome. I actually, mm-hmm. I grew up with the PC. I, mm-hmm. but I, 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 let's say that Sega and the Mega Drive. Mm-hmm. That that's how. Yes, <laughs> it's called here. Mm-hmm. Um, had a, a big uh, impact on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if I, I played it only either. With um, uh, some friends, mm-hmm. uh, I was, or mm-hmm. um, in, in a weird way, it was. Um, so um, it was also what got me, mm-hmm. strangely enough, into programming as well. There is wow. a link between. <laughs> oh, so we got some um, Sega connection with your it, career, or oh, we go get it? No, this. I mean it's uh, it's just um, how it all started. It's um, mm-hmm. um, so uh, obviously. I, uh, uh, mm-hmm. It's um so yeah I I started programming when I was a teenager mm-hmm. so 
Um, so I was, I think, 12 or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was dabbling with different, you know, game making software and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the, the breakthrough moment where, was when I, I got my hands into in a, on a uh, 56K modem. Ooh, so let's go. Let's try that, that modem was the internet. Talk. And with the internet comes piracy, right? Yes, so, yeah. <laughs> so, Talk to himself. Uh, Talk to him. I, I, I have no idea what Talk that is. Talk to himself. No, I've never heard that word before. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, 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 oh. I'll let you hold that thought, just simply, because I know because we're gonna get we're gonna dive deep into the intro. I just got we got I got to get the lords in, and we're gonna go right back to you because we got a lot to talk. And you you're about to get into your bag, and I love it. So you already know. We've got the four horsemen of gaming, those original lords of the rub here at the round table. Uh-oh, my co-host with the co-most with the empty chair that is not there. Uh-oh. <laughs> the most difficult conqueror who is not there. <laughs> Lord of reviews and how of the young wolf who is still not there and muted. Lord Attic will get him on the comeback. <laughs> he left right when I'm doing his intro. Yeah. Awesome. Salute to Attic. <laughs> and of course, we still have. Almost technical gaming lord, the solo gamer who lives for the single player selfish experience, and also the Sastradamus. Mr. Offline Profile Illuminati and Lord Patron of the Iron Bank, my man, Lord Sovereign, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, y'all. I'm doing good. What's up? Um, it's perfect for Attic because he'll just come back just in time to interrupt. To me interrupt anyway. you, yes. <laughs> look, 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 look. Yes, look, look, look. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> He's a whole lot soft talking. <laughs> Let me interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. No. So, would you would you like to defer? Your no, no, no. I know. I'll let him go first because I, I need to get into a little bit of a talk. So, okay, okay, you know. okay. <laughs> Attic, um, I did your intro without you present. But uh, now yeah, that you are yeah, back, so, sorry about that. Like, uh -huh. Facebook has like this glitch now where mm -hmm. if you don't, if your Facebook's up and someone calls you, I can den I, I denied it on my phone. Uh -huh. But in my in my living room, my laptop had my Facebook up and it just kept ringing over and over <laughs> again. And after about crazy. three, yeah. after about three well, minutes of that, I was like, I'm done. I'm going in there and I'm shutting <laughs> it off. Yeah. Yeah. When we said that Attic was putting up the tattoo video oh, on King's OnlyFans. <laughs> only <laughs> <fan. laughs> Savage. Look, man, we you see, are. You see my face, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I can either confirm or deny that yeah, we have an only fans for IOP. No, I'm oh, man. <laughs> Shout out to Lord Taza Wichi. Five dollars super chat. So, kid, combat talk with some MMA, possibly since corrupted cog is neglecting MMA. Wow, we'll get yo, to that. We'll get yo, Taza Wichi, I understand. I saw the tweet yesterday yes. that you put out, and <laughs> um, I, I'll explain uh, why I am not uh, mm -hmm. qualified today to even talk about that yeah, he, <laughs> he was but, on some other things That's yeah but, <laughs> but uh our uh sovereign sastradam i think i took sastra's uh, Sov's name you know oh. he's no longer oh why, why what did you predict i predict i, I predicted right, a lot uh, of things but, <laughs> and uh yeah. i'll get into that, we'll get on into my, that. Uh, yeah on my intro bro we get to that so attic what's going on man nothing much man it's uh i actually i feel very well rested i don't Ooh. know how that happened well mm -hmm. i definitely <laughs> I didn't get a whole, know how that i definitely didn't get a whole lot of sleep maybe i'm just running on pure adrenaline, adrenaline i don't know here, that's why adrenaline. And that's what it is man the creator of one of my favorite games this year one of the creators yes. this year and, and and that alone is keeping me that's awake. right that's right you, heard uh, that you game know awards. if we, he, we don't get that 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 strategy award it's gonna be problems i'm sending the whole italy I over there i riot we're gonna Right, baby. <laughs> but but that's you know, it, it's, yeah, de definitely that. And I keep keep in mind, um, mm -hmm. we will just just so people know at the beginning, mm -hmm. I've gotten countless messages asking are we reacting to the Xbox show? The yeah. answer to that is yes. Of course. Oh no, my gosh, yes. yes. A resounding yes. No doubt. The question is, is Solve gonna be there? Oh, of course. Oh, so I'm not so so Lord, 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 Lord Sovereign will be coming down with something that day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get that I am again. completely sick. I lost my foot <laughs> yes. in a dryer. There you go. <laughs> No, no, no. So that's the answer to that because I had like eight people ask me. I'm like, yeah, we, we're, we've been reacting to everything. Why would we miss that? Like, well, actually, we're not reacting to the Ubisoft. Forward, yeah, we're not. <laughs> technically, we're not. Re we didn't react to EA. We didn't react to Ubisoft. We, Nobody we don't react reacted to, to EA or Ubisoft. Look, man, they mad, they mad at us. Well, Ubisoft is at three today. Yeah, they three they mad at us that we didn't react to the um, Avengers. I was like, uh, look, 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 man. After seeing the EA thing, mm. I think everyone in the chat could have used. I mean, we made 
made that boring tech thing they did on Sony look lit. I think we could have. EA needs no, to hire us. Like, no, I, I, I think that day we would have struck out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. No, King, boring. King, if we could make that lit, we mm. make anything lit. Hey. Well, Mark Cerny did ask for people ears. So that <laughs> alone it. made it lit. <laughs> anyway, so that, that has been it, sir. Because I get, I need to get it to solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the oh, no, oh. Pause, pause. Correct, correct. Pause. pause, pause. <laughs> so we get into solve. <laughs> <laughs> Relax yourself. <laughs> solve. What's going on, man? Chilling, man. Mm. Uh, I finally finished it on Wednesday. Day oh, after. Oh man, I'm doing a spoiler cast on on Monday on uh, Dolph uh, Castle X channel. Mm. You no, know, so we can really break down the psychology Ooh. of each character, like I oh. thought we was going to do, and mm. get into all mm. the. Uh, y'all, y'all needed me. Y'all needed me. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you're available uh, Monday at 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. I'll, you know, I'll be in there. So, you know, I'll send you a link. I'll see. I'll see if I can get paid. But um, got Last of Us, Last of Us Two yeah. completed. It's done. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this. I started to listen to you guys for the cast a little bit, and just I didn't finish it yet. But I'll say this. Um, I think everything that they set out to do, mm-hmm. uh, for the most part, landed. Mm-hmm. For the most part, um, I think th- this is a game that only Naughty Dog can make. I don't. I think this mm-hmm. is a game that they, only they are willing to make. Right. right? Because of the narrative twists and turns, and 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 the way they decided to tell this story, mm-hmm. now for me it falls just short of masterpiece, and, mm. and, and it falls there for a specific reason. Mm. Uh, obviously, I won't say the details, Spoiler but spoiler free. There mm. is a point where you where you sort of think that the game is over, yes. and, yeah. and it's and it's and it's not. And the things that happen to propel the story forward from there. Specifically, something that Attic mentioned about character motivations, mm-hmm. it didn't make sense to me. It did, it, 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 so, it, so, so, hold on. Out of curiosity, obviously, no spoiler. You give this a ten out of ten, like King does. No, I don't. No, he don't. He gives it a nine out of ten. No, I, I no, thought you let, didn't even. Did you say no? Not even a nine out make, of ten. No, no. Make no mistake. I. Everyone should play this game. Mm-hmm. Whether you you're gonna love it, you're gonna hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of you know th- this thing that people have with the love for the characters. Yeah. You got to remember, like Neil Druckmann and the, the, the actors, they love these characters more than anybody. Like, right. So they had to make the decision to tell this story in the way that they did, knowing full well how people would react. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, the, all of that aside, I, you have to always remember this is their story to tell. Right. Like, King, King has have, always said that. You have no agency here. Yeah. Yeah. Either <laughs> you're on board or you're not. Mm-hmm. Thank um, you. So I will say this, uh, but it almost broke the game for me because. Oh! The motivation. Wow. You, you really, motivation. you, you. I gotta put the addicts world in motion. This is it's, addict it's, world. Talk. It's like I told you, Cognito. Like it, it's not that the game's bad because it's not. It's no. it doesn't make sense in a no. lot of scenarios. And yeah. I don't even. I think for the most part it does. I don't. I don't. No, I said it, in a lot of part. scenarios. It's, that a lot it's of one. Scenarios. So this this one singular it's part. A, it's a it's this one part. part. I know what he's talking about. Right, that propels you. that propels you towards. The climax towards the right. conclusion, right? And the motivations in that moment mm-hmm. to take you now, mind you, for me, I feel the ending mm-hmm. and everything is fantastic. Okay, I just felt cheated because I felt like I didn't earn that. Got gotcha. because of what happened just prior to that. Right, got gotcha. you. Okay, um, fair enough. Fair enough. So to the point where I was like, I, I had to get up for a minute. I was upset. Like mm-hmm. at the way, wow, at the way it went down, I was upset. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think much like the characters in this game, mm-hmm. I had to get over it. Okay. And 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 I got over it. I don't get I, over anything. <laughs> yes, Attic, we don't. No, no. Yeah. But, so um, just cause, just because I have to agree with them, don't mean I am. Uh, uh, that that that's no. the sovereign world of thinking right there. This no, no, is the no, no, Attic no. world. Okay. It's, it's again, like it's either you're gonna like it or you don't. It's their story nah, to tell. I'm not doing this one way or the other. Okay, I'm in the middle and I'm planting my flag down. No, no, like, and I am. You could do. I am firmly in. Like I said, it's <laughs> it's not a masterpiece for that reason. I think mm-hmm. that it 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 sort of it just didn't land for me the way it should have. Though okay. the ending I felt was fantastic and would have landed okay. so much better for me personally. Fair enough. If that lead up part had been different. 
fair yeah, enough, fair enough. At, at the end of the day man th there's only one thing that truly matters oh, final God. fantasy 7 is the better game oh my so, God. here we go <laughs> anyway oh, man, you can jump yourself <laughs> in the bushes yeah. 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 Nah. Nah. Yeah, no no i'm, no, I'm legitly and, not and, being no, like and, and, and I'm, I'm gonna not, say this i'm gonna say this i'm right? being serious I yeah, me, 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 too. Me, too. me too i'm being real serious too <laughs> shout out to the genius of neil druckman <laughs> shout out to the genius, the genius of and, neil uh, and i can't I did can't you give, put it into the listen, bushes because i honestly I think seven is better i can't give a genius to the final fantasy and the reason why i can't give a genius to the final fantasy is like me rewriting ether like me <laughs> taking, Ether, taking the bare bones of Ether and saying, you know what, Nas, move over, what baby. Shit? Let me Did put my flavor seven? on this. And, and look, for a new generation. We, about, we, we get, get the new generation. Look, I know we're about to do Game of the Year talk, but we have a guest. We got a lot of shows. Yes, we, yeah, we, have a lot of, man. we got the move. Let's get this super chat. Shroom King, two dollars super chat. You need these to get over things at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Okay. Well, Cause he know they in my pocket. Oh my god. So look, so pretty much it <laughs> oh, down Christopher with Hart's it. agree with me. If he's agreeing beat the world. The world is, yeah, he Chris he Martin, said, I agree it. Final Fantasy Seven wow. is better. You sl wow. Wow. Oh, wow. slandering a Sony title? Whoa. That we might have to document that for another Sony title, technically, right? With, with, with another Sony title. With another Sony title. You gotta leave Christopher on. on so soft. That's, that's been been pretty much it. You got that done now. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I needed a little uh sort of like cool down after that so yeah. i played a i picked up curse of the moon part two okay the mm. blood stain yes, yes. which picked version did you pick sir i got the switch version because switch fine. coming in hot let's go that's in game pass that's a dub sir i know cross code is in game pass i don't cross know about no no, no no i got i got that blood stain that's in game pass sir. don't you that's love two, don't, two, don't, don't you that's love a, how Cogito specifically <laughs> baited out the switch so he could put that email Listen. and it's still going he still Lord, hasn't put it off Lord, yet lord giuseppe yeah. this the switch here gets a lot of love so we just try to educate people that you know these that's these these, 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 titles, <laughs> these titles are available on uh you know portable what did you what was that? that? Did you? Could you repeat that, Lord? Just I love my switch. Man. I <laughs> <laughs> Coming I in hot. Let's go. <laughs> See, some okay. people appreciate and the Cognito, finer uh, things in life. Cognito, we're gonna talk about how you was regretting playing Mortal Kombat on the Switch, and not no, the we're not gonna discuss that. So we gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna yeah, the, the, Good. The, the ports of bigger games are hit and miss. I mean, they are interesting technically, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are not great to play, but the original games or the indie games are oh, fantastic. Amazing, like, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we have the newly tattooed <laughs> Incredible Hulk of this, <laughs> aka the Excess Gamer, Ooh. the Lord of Combat Sports, King of the Statues, who demands nothing less than that premium experience. It is the leader of the Fraud Alert Movement. Ooh. Beloved Lord King, how are we doing, sir? Yeah, <laughs> doing good, buddy. Uh, we had combat yesterday. Yes, sir. We had seven hour tattoos yesterday. Shout out to Wilmy Hood on the seven hour tattoo because uh, the tattoo artist of uh, Pony Montana wanted to have <laughs> symmetry on my chest. Mm -hmm. uh, the nipple area is definitely completely uh, scared. Mm -hmm. What was going on? You know. <laughs> <laughs> heard all the ruckus going on and the nipple came out I was like what's going on up there <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we have the crest we have the the crest of the lords now officially tattooed on your chest is 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 it official how does it feel how does it feel sir I feel like I was it it under it feels uh, tender right now <laughs> the night for, for seven hours um <laughs> yeah we did take a break mm -hmm. uh it, which is you know it's whatever. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just go through it, you know, mm -hmm. just keep going. But, uh, you know, uh, somebody had came in to get a tattoo and the way we had scheduled it, mm -hmm. you know, the king messed up. But um, mm -hmm. shout out to uh, Full Moon uh, Tattoo Salute. Artist Salute. Uh, Studios and um, mm -hmm. uh, Pony Montana for taking care oh of that tattoo. Oh, my God, the chat. And I was uh, giving Wilmy Hood, uh, you know, pictures, updates while I was going down because, mm -hmm. you know, he had his uh, grandson with him yesterday. So he, you know, couldn't do the, the live mm -hmm. face with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the uh, video will be up soon because I didn't have uh, I wasn't access to a yeah. couple of things. Bro, yesterday. you was in there for eight hours. Yeah, I, I got to edit, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff. You're not going to get mm -hmm. seven hours worth of video. That's no, not but, yo, happen. shout out to you for putting out the preview 
you know what I'm saying, to give us a little taste. Like, you even have to do that. Like, that was love. Like, give us a little Oh, freedom. no, no. Um, you definitely going to understand. If you want to see the nipple in full effect, you're going to have to pay. you have to be a Patreon <laughs> member. You're going to have to be a member of the realm. The nipple is not fans only. Shout out to Tyson <laughs> with you with the follow Super Chat. He said, where's King's OnlyFans leak? You're exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to Wilby with the $15 Super Chat. Who did that for you? <laughs> yeah, 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 Will, Will. Go take care of the baby. Go sit down. <laughs> You're out of here. Wow. This one out. This he wasn't going to sit this one out. Oh, my yeah. God. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, watch the MMA uh, yeah. yesterday. I get because, you. you know, the king was, uh, yeah. just, I was just tired. He was under know? the roof. Yeah, because I was in a cool environment, right? Mm-hmm. So the environment was completely cool. It felt Arctic, to be honest with you. Yeah. And then after I left out of the tattoo shop, yeah. now you're in one freezing cold situation, and you walk outside to humidity Ooh. in New York City. Oh, dude, at oh yeah. The time, yeah. It felt like mm-hmm. somebody put a, a, a weighted vest on me. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God. And it completely drained me of my energy. I you. So, I, you know, it took the whole night to get my energy back. Well, but, shout, um, shout out to the food and the, and the drinks. Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. For I sure, saw the sex to be. It was very, yeah, very, very, very fantastic, sure, sir. Sure, definitely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, always. Um, So, <laughs> shout out to Game Pass. Woo! <laughs> Yo, I got I got to give Anchorman his props. Yo, your Anchorman, man, told you, you know, we love Fallout 76 and it has a new home. <laughs> you know, I, I, I turned it up. I tuned it up and I got, I made me. I made me and I, I look so good in it. I look good in it. Had a little gray in the bed. It was it was nice. It was no just for men because it's a post uh, uh, apocalyptic. So, you know, I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Had it like that. Mm-hmm. But the game is definitely Fallout. It's nice. All out, yo, and I was like, yo, mm-hmm. the frame rate is beautiful, mm-hmm. everything because you know I'm playing on an X, yeah. <laughs> so it looks <laughs> fantastic. But also, somebody told me to download cross code, so I downloaded cross code. Oh, yesterday. I hear and horns, I hear yeah, horns. Yeah. Jay yeah. Bailey, throw the crest up. Welcome to the realm. I'm a little early, you guys will get it, but Jay Bailey, I, I just heard horns, new yes, member of the realm. Yes. Salute. They, they go those crests. Put those crests, the crests up. up I'm playing the board. messenger mm-hmm. and um, nice. trying to finish that. That game is out of control. Sabotage but Studios, it, brother. Yeah, there's so mm-hmm. many games that's inside yeah. Game Pass right now mm-hmm. um, because I want to get back to all the Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. And I have all these stuff in my queue. Yeah. So I'm trying to, like, do this round robin and stuff. But I have so – I did so many mm-hmm. uh, interviews this week yeah. Uh, yeah. leading up. That was why there was no uh, KOS no, this fine, week. Bro. You've been but super I gotta, busy. Yeah, You've been I got a box busy. coming in tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So that box is uh, – oh, that's the box that you guys voted on. You oh. guys voted on Miles Morales. So you already know that uh, ahead of time that a premium format will be here tomorrow. I'm doing um, a spoiler cast on uh, Last of Us 2. Nice. The remix, the more in-depth, deep dive nice. of psych- psychology mm-hmm. of the, the game, the the magnificent. He's got to break it down more Neil. to justify the nonsense that goes no, down. No. In that <laughs> genius of Neil Druckmann. Uh-oh. Uh, Oh you know, God! I'll be sure I'm to. to make little, uh, who I mean, that I, for you, Neil Druckmann emoji soon. It, no, there's so much. There's so much symbolism in that game, though. Like, yes. Crazy, crazy stuff that, like, you know, you don't. It can go right over your head. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You, you, you take f- from the game what you want. Mm-hmm. But like, even when it comes down, like, to the music and like, it's everything. Mm-hmm. Everything is. There's a lot. There's no a doubt. lot. No doubt. There's no a whole doubt. bunch to it. But um, y'all, could y'all please tell me who won what fights yesterday? Um, um, right. yeah, Let me just get the super chat, but then solve a start. Yeah, oh, we, we have a we have a couple. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm up to Dan, right? I got mm-hmm. a Dan, Roger, shout out to Dan, Roger, season gaming in the building, five dollars super chat. I am yeah. hereby relinquishing my shares in, <laughs> in King's left knee, giving the news this week, Attic. It's all yours. I'll watch from the bushes. <laughs> 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 so you want to get, oh, we got, uh, we got a little brap, little chat, brap. That was two dollars super chat. Woo! Salute, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, shout out to Joe Bailey for joining the round. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, right. Oh, then we have Tazuichi again. Hold on. Oh. Tazuichi with the Fatah Asu chat. Also, King Hulk is on its way. Sir, you might get Hulk Buster Iron Man to go head to head with him. Mm. Oh. Okay. So, I don't know, sir. Um, I'm in position because uh tomorrow well tuesday i have another unboxing that we will be doing on uh Dolph, uh castle x channel mm-hmm. and uh the head of uh spec fiction right it's uh um a statue purchasing company mm-hmm. yeah. uh you know you could purchase your statues through spec fiction mm-hmm. uh, they have payment plans and stuff like that and 
he has a Hulk transformation that he might, you know, get the king for oh. a nice price. Oh, okay. So the statue on deck, nice. Yeah, yeah. that statue's two thousand dollars. So I think he was talking about that's what he's gonna try to do. But that, oh, that is- okay, got you, got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you've been talking. Mm-hmm. Been talking. No doubt. Been talking. Everybody threw the crest up for the new round member. It was a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I right, no doubt, no doubt. So that's been pretty much it, man. We gotta move on. A lot of show, and of course, we have the gaming ninja himself, the Shinobi Lord Cognito, spreading that realness in the realm of the IOP. Not telling what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Shout out to the last word list for. Friday, man, salute Ebontis, my bro. We had Chibi Kim from the amazing Resolute Clan talking Destiny. Destiny's been a fantastic play. Season of Rivals is amazing, solve. And that's why I ain't been playing that because Season of Rivals has been damn amazing. <laughs> and when Destiny's good, I don't play anything. Shout- oh, hold on. Let me talk about Destiny, brother, right now. Shout out to Gaming Forte, the bro. Have a great stream, Lords. Glad to be affiliated with great people. Have an iced coffee on myself, Slow Mo, and the rest of the Brat Podcast. Brat in the building, Slow in the building, Forte in the building. Salute y'all. You already know it's all love. But yeah, man, it's been I've been doing that. And um, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, just some great story bo- beats. Been rocking that. And then uh, hopefully I can get everything done. And it looks like I'm going to ease right into uh, go to sushi, sushi Ba. This week, so we'll, we'll do yeah, that. I've actually been playing uh, that Slay the, uh, the Spire yeah. that's on Game Pass. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. See, all right, no, so look, we got a lot of show, y'all. Obviously, we know why we are, are here. Oh, but Sov, you wanted to get something? You wanted to get something? Are we going to do, are we going to appease the, the masses and talk a little MMA? Or we just oh, my on? bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, real quick, I saw the last three. I'm going to get something to drink. Yes, that's right. I'll, make, I'll make it quick. I'll make it quick because I know, I know they get mad. Tazu, this is for Tazuichi. Um, I saw the three. I saw the, the Aldo and, and um and Jan, I believe, right? So, so I saw the entire card, right? Okay. Um, so from the jump, um, Amanda Hibas versus uh Paige Van Zant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paige is just outclassed again. I mean, I think something about Paige is like fight IQ. Mm-hmm. Like once once she gets in there, she sort of seems to forget and lose what she's learned. Mm. And and when she's put in certain situations, she she just kind of loses it and she right. just got tapped out right. um Dana white made a statement saying like i, I think she should consider free agency oh. <laughs> so, wow yeah i think Paige. i mean maybe she needs to go someplace else to feel like she the spotlight is less on her mm-hmm. and, and improve so yeah i don't i don't know what her future is in the ufc on um, then we had the rematch between jessica andrage yes and thug rose yes. and thug rose pulled it out ah. yeah no, you're not. She pulled it out. Um, it was a great fight. Yet again, Andraj was like a relentless, uh, you know, in 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 range one all day, mm-hmm. um, just throwing bombs. And Rose managed to keep the distance. She got hit with a lot of stuff too, but she managed to use her jab, keep the distance, mm-hmm. use her feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and in general, there was she she showed ring generalship. Where it, yeah. it, it was it was obvious she sort of won the fight but it was very well contested okay. um and i would like to see i i'm thinking rose is uh gonna fight uh was it jang Wiley or yes for the title mm-hmm. um that should be interesting, that should be rose, interesting. rose looks like she's recommitted yeah. so that's good she's then we had pio Trigian versus jose aldo oh, i saw that one and he saw uh-huh. he hit him in a body shot on the ground and made that boy made Aldo look like he got shot. He, he, hit, him, he, he hit him with the with the with the caca maker. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, Aldo, the thing about Aldo is, man, Aldo he looks great for his age. He yeah. still has the body. Still has the thing about Aldo is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. And Aldo is he's just not built to be standing in the pocket with people anymore. Yeah. Like too many wars, bro. Too many, Too many wars. Like he's he's not built for that with somebody who can go toe to toe with him, yeah. and he doesn't really utilize his jujitsu at all. So mm-hmm. when he decides that's what he's going to do, which is you know ninety nine percent of the time, mm-hmm. he's probably going to be on the receiving end of an L because it's just like the chin isn't the same no matter what you mm-hmm. say. Well, he took some good shots here, but it's just not the same. It's yep. just not. I saw that. Speak oh. to the boy. It was a good no, fight though. It, it was a couple of moments. Oh. Aldo did have some moments though. Yeah, or oh, absolutely did have yeah, some moments. Some moments. I those moments when he just kicks the leg out yeah, from under. Kick the leg, make you spin. Yeah, 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 I saw exactly. that. Good. And know. then we had the featherweight championship rematch with Alexander Volkanovsky versus Bless Max Holloway. Um, <laughs> Max got robbed. Rob. Straight up. <laughs> Max got robbed. Uh, again, fantastic fight. Well contested fight all the way through. Mm-hmm. Volkanovsky again, uh, using using the fact that he has you know a. a 
issues with, with, with height and, and reach when it yeah. comes to fighting Holloway. Mm -hmm. He managed to move in and out very well. He caught Holloway with a lot, but I think Holloway just kind of commanded the ring for the most part yeah. of that so fight, so. especially the first three rounds. Yeah. It was sort of obvious. Mm -hmm. So to say that he lost that fight was, uh, yeah, judging, I didn't see that. Judging in MMA, man. And, and, and MMA. And then, of course, we had Woo! <laughs> the main event. Scarface. <laughs> Not, let's, let's go. Nigeria, what's up? Yeah, okay. Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Masvidal. Game bread. Game um, bread. And honestly, Usman did what he needed to do to win. Um, Shout out to the boring not, style. Yeah, the boring People style. Not <laughs> People were not pleased at all. And Kamaru Usman could care less. He could care um, less, bro. Yeah. So, so Usman got the win? Oh, yeah. He yeah, controlled he got the win. He controlled him, man. He, he controlled him. In the beginning, Masvidal managed to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, he managed uh, uh, to get uh, his combos off or whatnot. But the thing is, he was just not ready for Kamaru Brown getting him Kamaru. Once he saw he could take him down. Yeah, it was a wrap. He, it, we, that's all he was doing. There was one <laughs> moment in the fight, I would say round three, where he had like a yeah. side lock and then he just tossed him. And then, why are you laughing at it? You're out of control. <laughs> because, yo, I know dudes out here salty. Oh, yeah, I'm salty. I ain't gonna front. I like gay yo. bread. I'm very salty. I know. I mean, <laughs> you know you what know a Mosvidal fan? I thought no, you know what? I love the guy. Oh. I'm just saying, I know how dudes feel. Yeah. He, okay, listen. I'm really indifferent with it. I like the dude, right? Yeah. I'm not really, you know, like passionately like Ron, Ron, behind yeah. him, right? So, um, but I know how dudes when they be like, "That's my champion, get the win," get, the win. <laughs> and it didn't happen. Yeah. You know, I really thought he was gonna get the win, but he's not gonna be blasting out people with the knee because they're not gonna run to go tackle him real yeah. quickly yeah. in the beginning of the match. So, yeah, yeah. come on. Okay, so. Yeah, Kamaro. Kamaro is just—he doesn't care about that. He's gonna—he's gonna play to his strengths, mm -hmm. which he should, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, but Masvidal again, it, he was prepared, but not obviously wasn't prepared. Only a couple of days though, so if he only came yeah, to that fight yeah. last but, you know, year. He, he always—he always keeps himself in shape, right? Yeah. Like, this is this is a new Masvidal now. Yeah. So, um, but I, he needed to be ready for the ground game, and yeah. he just wasn't. He just wasn't. Yeah, shout he, out to him. He just wasn't but and that's it so it's gonna be interesting uh shout out to fight island in abu dhabi yes that was yes, yes salute salute to the no crowd and, <laughs> and, but and it, it felt like it was more it felt swag, more man. It, I it, can't. It's that's why it's hard more. for me to watch ufc Taz, with you this yeah. is why it's hard for us to do for me to do the ufc joint because it's just not the same thing when they come in the ring and you can hear them coughing and yeah. you're like no it just, but ah. it gives it a nice gym feel yeah. it gives it uh uh a, a different atmosphere and it. you get to hear a lot more because a lot of times you don't really hear the impact of punches yeah. you don't really hear where you, you know what it is though? game changing stuff like almost it almost feels and i and i know this is probably not true but it right. feels like like almost that like they're not in it as much yeah, as they because you can tell when Masvidal's coming in, he's like from miami he's hyping himself up laughing well, you have to, <laughs> like, because remember all gladiators need to fight off of the crowd that's they the crowd that the energy crowd, the switch the yeah, thing that i the there. reason why i don't like watching ufc right now i'm almost finished this episode. we're gonna get into you i'm sorry but the, the reason why i hate it is because i know a lot of dudes that fold under them lights and yeah. when there's no, See, there, you, there's gym, you, come on, King, you know the truth. There's no, gym dudes, I, I, yeah, yeah, and then that. there's dudes yeah. that can perform under they, they lights. Perform under and the light. I think Masvidal is a lights dude, and for whatever reason, you know, I'm not taking that away from. So, football. all right, so listen, this is the yeah. thing that Dana um, was having a problem with. Mm -hmm. uh, football is going to introduce artificial crowd noise. They've been doing it for mm -hmm. years, but this time it's going to be mm -hmm. a little bit more um, out there because there won't be anybody there, and then you will hear the artificial crowd noise. Yeah. Now what they were trying to figure out is how do they implement artificial crowd noise in MMA? Right. Because they were trying to experiment with it before because that was on the table. Right. Dennis said, no, he didn't want it mm. because it gives an, a clear advantage to uh, either fighter. Right. right? What, what I would say is have a person with like a ooh wee button. I'm right. Done. So <laughs> when a punch, when a punch <laughs> land, you be like, ooh wee. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done and, and it definitely, it, it, it amps them up and they, they feel, they want to get that ooh wee off. Just a man said a ooh wee button. I cannot get you right now. Hey, let's get the super chat. We got to get it. Just me. Shout out to uh, Stitch. Look it on, man. Yeah, 6669 file us in the chat. King, based on some hot rumors out in the streets, you might have to get more than one storage unit to store yeah, those. Yeah, I'm about to buy a new house, bro. Boxes of these. He said, yeah. who did that for you? Book event. Yeah. So if we yeah. go up. 
Yeah, well, we have to reach again. Undercard over delivered. The main card was okay. The undercard was the gem. You got to watch more unnamed fighters for undercard fights. Trust Oldemir. Oldemir yes. got KO. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. a fact. So, look, man, we got all that out the way. Let's get into the main event. Why the reason why a lot of us are here. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about the amazing Lord Giuseppe in the building, man. So, let's, let's get into it, man. Obviously, you know, you got to talk about your video game system history, you know, your passion for retro gaming. And of course, um, as the top, one of the top coders in Italy, you know what I'm saying? His journey would lead you to splash damage and of course becoming the principal gameplay programmer at the amazing Gears Tactics. So Lord Giuseppe, let's start from the very beginning. What were some of the first video game systems you had and what got you into gaming? So I, I started with APC. So my first mm -hmm. computer was a 286 uh, machine, like so MS DOS. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, uh, so um, yeah, I was seven or six mm -hmm. uh, years old. Wow, um, baby. And that was, uh, yeah, and that was because um, it, it was just uh, from my uh, mm -hmm. My dad's office. It mm -hmm. was a, an old machine by uh, the standards the standards mm -hmm. of that day, mm -hmm. and it was just uh, so this second-hand PC. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I started there, and uh, I started with uh, the first games were like this weird, you know. I, I remember uh, a submarine simulator, and uh, because my my dad was big into uh, s simulators and strategy okay. games and stuff. So he was a game, he was a gamer himself. Like, okay. Like, yeah, dad. yeah. A little, bit, awesome. a little bit. It, mm -hmm. it, it was mostly for him. It was either, uh, it, it, it's still games from time to time, but it's always like some, uh, uh grand strategy kind mm -hmm. of game. So save and this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So Stinger says 286 um, represent a lot of 286 fans in there. Continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From, from there, I, I got the 486 and, and so on, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, but the first games that really made an impression on me were, uh, the first one was, uh, Prince of Persia. Mm. So, uh, that one was, it was my stake on the game ever. Wow. That I actually played. So I remember like, uh, sitting on my uh dad's legs and uh, like trying to mm -hmm. you know play the game yeah. um and yeah that, that was like for me that that one was like oh wow this yes this little guy like yes. moving around the screen that was like yeah. insane amazing and mm -hmm. um and yeah and and then uh i i think uh, uh another world mm -hmm. uh, that it's um oh, bro it, don't, yeah. don't you you cut you coming from a heart now <laughs> That's one of literally one of my favorite games of all time. Made by one Thank guy, you. Eric yep. Chahi, who I actually met for the first time wow. this year in person. In um, wow. he's at PAX 2020, and I have a video so up on the chat. He he's a that that game is like. Oh, talk to me. Let's talk about another world real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead I'm, I'm so jealous uh, of you, <laughs> bro. I sent you the picture. I'm, I'm a I mean, I'm a really big fan. Um, yes. That th that game for me was the moment where I I knew like, uh, okay, I want to do this. I yes. Want to do this kind of stuff because it was like a movie. You know, yes. you had the credits, you have the the name like showing mm -hmm. up. So I, at that moment, I knew like, oh, games are actually made mm -hmm. by people. There is someone <laughs> that's doing this. Dude, <laughs> Giuseppe, wasn't it so good? The atmospheric storytelling without really any narrative. And you just figuring things out in the world, right? Yeah. It, it's just oh, it, it is. It's truly a masterpiece, man. I absolutely love that game. So that that was the game that kind of sparks you a bit. Oh yes, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And that that was actually also when I started later on, obviously mm -hmm. um, programming. That was the the first game I tried to clone as well. Wow. I started to do my own a 2d cinematic platformer at that time nice and that was the yeah the first thing i tried mm -hmm. i failed miserably <laughs> <laughs> salute to the attempt salute to the attempt. Mm -hmm. i i didn't have the, the skills of uh Harry Chai, uh, <laughs> <laughs> obviously <laughs> um oh, good. but oh, yeah good. but that yeah. where that that was it really and uh as i was uh, saying before for me the thing that really mm -hmm. Uh, changed was um, during um, high school, the, the first year of high school, I mm -hmm. think, uh, I got my hands in, in uh, on, on this modem. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I got 66K. the internet. Yep. 
and from there i you know the, back then it was uh irc and news grabs and you know mailing IRC. list and so yeah, yeah. so in in an irc channel mm -hmm. that was about you know programming and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. i i met one guy and uh somehow th this guy was older than me it was already like studying in the university he was mm -hmm. st uh, studying computer science mm -hmm. And I, I begged him to, mm -hmm. uh, to you know, to uh, let me know more about uh, like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know what? If you, I'm going to just uh, mail you uh, something. I'm, I'm going to mail you a, a, a package it's because Ooh. yeah, the modem was so slow back then. Mm -hmm. So I, without my parents knowing, yeah. I, I gave him like my. Ad home address and everything. oh my god was, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. so i was like yeah, sure yeah sure someday. here's my address <laughs> this is, that's the exact yeah. reason why i don't let my son play online that's the exact <laughs> reason here's my, right this came out of here's my address yeah. so so bad, shout it. out to bad judgment let's go it was a different <laughs> time it was a different time Continue. So yeah, it was back then. i mean we we used nicknames and uh, sorry I, yeah i i don't even i didn't even knew like this game new, real name you even know it's because you, you just this is IRC yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like the days of AOL. We're just like cool with yeah. random people. We act like they're our friends. I, I love it. When it when the dark web was in your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I, I I think the internet is scarier, way scarier now. Yes. I, 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 yeah. There's more people as well. Yeah. So yeah. what was but, the package? Talk to me. And the package contained two CD-ROMs. Mm. One CD-ROM had Visual Studio Six. Point zero. So okay. one package was Visual, uh, uh, obviously a totally legit copy of Visual Studio. Oh, look, completely <laughs> legit, uh, completely yeah. legit. All, and the all other rules one, were abided by. Continue. Yeah, and the, and the other one was uh, game changing as well for me. Mm -hmm. It was a CD-ROM full of ROMs mm -hmm. and an AIM letter called Genesis. Mm -hmm. It was one of the early Genesis <laughs> emulators. Ooh, Sob as seems well. to be familiar. Would yeah, expand, I, would expand yeah. Sob. We seem to be relating to this. I remember like there was a when when it was very difficult to download anything on your 56k modem, right? Oh yeah. Was, you, you you would find oh. al alternative resources online, shall we say. <laughs> so I remember uh, a site that I went to that it was called Sell Sold Gone. Uh -huh. And and it was just I, I stumbled upon it mm -hmm. and I didn't realize what it was until I started flipping through like and, and I realized something was up when it was like, yeah, just email me and I'll tell you what I have. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the shady dealings. And the but, but once I emailed him, I was like, oh, wow. Like it was really <laughs> like when I say the dude had everything, it was everything. Like my first order with him was probably like two hundred dollars worth of. I'm not gonna say what, but <laughs> it, wow. shout out to the ROMs. Shout out, shout out to the. Oh, so you, you had that Visual Studio Six, and then you had the the ROM, the Genesis. Talk to me. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so from there, I started learning C++. Nice. With, uh, oh, with awesome. that copy of uh, Visual Studio Six. Wow. And uh, I started learning uh, DirectX. Um, mm. And yeah, there was DirectX eight, and then mm -hmm. nine. Mm. So the first shaders and stuff like that. Mm. Wow! Um, wow! And, now, was it was it was it daunting at all for you? I mean, because look, I, I I work in IT, but I, I I tried my hand for a second at program for a second, and just every I realized very quickly I was not built for this. <laughs> you know what I'm I wasn't built for SQL database, and I was I wasn't built for a lot of this stuff. Like, were you? I know the passion was there, but were you at any point overwhelmed by like just coding and programming? I I don't think so. It was mostly for me because it, it was kind of my thing. In a way, it was I I I could spend like entire days just uh, trying to figure out something really small, like uh, you know moving a um, um, uh, character on the screen yes. or like <laughs> it would take this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but that's uh, back then. It was mm -hmm. I think there was this element of uh, you know mm -hmm. discovery as well. Uh, at least for me, because it you, you didn't have like um, uh, tutorials on YouTube or, or this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, there, there were this this group of people in you know news graphs on or mm -hmm. in chats and stuff like that. But they were doing their own cool mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and they were like sometimes like sharing this, but there was not not a real like community for me. It was just uh, me trying to figure out uh, stuff out mm -hmm. uh, back then, and so 
that didn't really I, I didn't have like a goal oh, oh okay i'm going to um mm -hmm. you know to make a an, a complete game or something right. uh that was i mean it was my intention it was uh, i always tried to make like a this guy ginormous game that was like <laughs> always like impossible to do mm -hmm. but it was like uh, something that um it was just a, my hobby in a way it was right. just uh mm -hmm. you know when you try to learn guitar or something like that for mm -hmm. me it was trying to program a game gotcha uh, so and i even started before I had the internet, I used like all mm -hmm. these kind of tools for, for example, in, in a, I, uh, I got this software one time in a, like a new stands or something that mm -hmm. there was, that there was this other, like a uh, game making software that okay. was called, uh, give me uh, some name. You remember the name? So yeah, sure. The, the, the very first one I used was, uh, click and play that's oh, okay. from click team and was, they are already, they are still active. They. Ooh. They do this uh, multimedia fusion, I, I think it's called. Right. Uh, it's one of the earliest uh, Windows-based, mm -hmm. uh, like UI-based uh, game making tool. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, nice. Then there was another one I, I tried for quite a while. It was mm -hmm. called uh, Div Game Studio, and okay. that was from a, a Spanish developer mm -hmm. uh, uh, called uh, Amer Technologies back okay. then. Okay. And that was that was interesting because it had a complete. Um, environment so mm -hmm. it had a proper programming language mm -hmm. so pascal like mm -hmm. and then the, you had a, um, a map editor that looked really wow. looked like the doom map editor wow. so you could yeah. make like 3d uh environments very mm -hmm. um yeah doom like uh, maps mm -hmm. um so yeah i i played with that for a while but then obviously when i when I upgraded my machine to something that had, like, you know, a, a proper 3D card, right. uh, like a, the Matrix Mystic or something okay. like that. Okay. Right then. Mm. Um, yeah, but when I, I started, like, doing that stuff and mm -hmm. then I, uh, with, with the internet, it was, like, way easier for me because it was, I was, suddenly I knew about OpenGL and DirectX right. and I could download the SDK from the Microsoft site right. and uh, just, uh, you know, learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was the the language barrier for me as well. That's what I was. Yeah, I was gonna ask you like, how did you how did you deal with the language barrier? One and then two was um, I had heard a story. You correct me if I'm wrong, that you kind of also kind of got your story about you sent the letter to like a games magazine for oh, your yes. interest to got to get into. So for us, it would be like the equivalent of like a you know EGM or a Game Pro and say, hey, I want to mm -hmm. like is that that was true? That was true. Yep. Nice. Yes, definitely. Nice. Yep. So how did you yeah, do with that, that and was... the language barrier? How did you do all that? Um, so what, for the language barrier, obviously, it's something that I, I, I did like during the, the years. So mm -hmm. when I mm -hmm. like start uh, my, my English got better in, in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, but it, it was also a, a way to, to learn mm. um, English in, in a way. Mm. Um, so you was so, doing two hard things at one time. You were learning English and learning how to program. Wow, that's incredible. Wow. Bananas. Yeah. yeah, we cannot yeah, gloss but, over that, brother. That is impressive. And le learning English is, I, I guess, it's the byproduct of you know staying on on the internet and like mm -hmm. you know. At first, I was in you know, this kind of bubble of uh, Italian like news groups and yeah. you know small forums and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then, then uh, I, um, yeah, I obviously started looking uh, mm. uh, at English stuff as well, mm -hmm. and that wow. was when really like opened the, the, the entire. He said, "He said that's where the real criminals was at." So I had to <laughs> oh my move God. over from there because they were sending me better stuff. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> said, yeah. Shout out to the Dodge Knight with the five pound super jet, chilling on the English coast, coast, listening to the Lords. Perfect. Salute yeah. to the Dodge Knight and the Dicky Knight. Salute. Salute. We have uh, 222 in the chat. Yes, let's let's, let's get them likes up, guys. Come yeah. on. Come on, man. Give you Giuseppe know. his props. Let's you go. You already know. Almighty Stubbs, what's going on? Mighty Spartan God, what's going on? These are some, <laughs> some great stories going on right now. So, so you, And the magazine thing. Yes. Tell me about the bag. Um, I was about to go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the magazine was, yeah, the equivalent of uh, PC Gamer in Italy. Oh. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, so uh, yeah, I sent this letter to the magazine bragging that I was doing a, a new 3D engine. Ooh, uh, bragging? Hey, was this was, accurate, yes, I, Giuseppe? Or were we yeah. were we embellishing a little bit? I, I was doing, uh, so I, what I was doing, I was ripping 3D models from uh, 
lots of games. <laughs> so I had like a few models from Quake. I had nice. uh, the back then it was brand new, um, the, the model from Max Payne. I think I, yeah. I tried to rip. Mm -hmm. uh, that was even, even before, maybe. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, so I had this um, 3D engine going that mm -hmm. was capable of uh, loading like uh, um, in models in the format of like the Quake. Yes. two and three uh format mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah i was i was doing that but it was very obviously it was uh nowhere near <laughs> like an actual <laughs> professional tool you know, but like but but it was like a fun project and um it was uh it was mostly me alone at, up to this point mm -hmm. but then in in high school i uh i kind of uh joined another mm -hmm. uh nerd mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh like me that it, it was doubling on uh you know um mm -hmm. web development he was doing uh websites mm -hmm. as a like his own gig um mm -hmm. and then we decided to 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 make a forum for uh, hobbyist uh, developers in italy mm -hmm. uh so we yeah it, it was uh, mm -hmm. uh 2003 i think yeah oh, wow, when we we did we did this uh this forum for uh italian speaking uh nice. game developers nice. uh, let's say Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, from from there I I met a lot of people mm -hmm. and I and 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 that grew, kind of grew up and mm -hmm. went on its own way. Oh, we, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's up. Now let me ask you. I just want to back you up one second because I forgot to ask. Um, in re obviously we we talked about the PC <laughs> beginning as far as from your gaming history standpoint, right? And then I noticed you mentioned some 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 me her little Mega Drive in there, right? So what were the other? What, did you? My question is, what were the other classic games or consoles or whatever that may have you know influenced you, or was it just a PC only thing? Like, give me some big influences, video game retro wise for you. So I I, I had the. I was lucky enough that I even if uh, I only had uh, PC, mm -hmm. I had friends with uh, you know some friends had the Amiga, some mm. friends had the my cousins for example had the, the Super Nintendo, Ooh. and um, so I I I got to play a little bit of everything, mm. and I and we also have uh, had an, uh, an arcade uh, just uh, mm. uh, next to to my house in my okay. little town there was a it was a very shady place. <laughs> <laughs> it was it sounds like a mod my, story. Continue. Uh, yeah, it was something my, that my parents actually, com they were like I, I yeah, I, I used to play you know Street Fighter two in the, in the arcades or Outrun whatever, uh -huh. and uh, but um, yeah, my my parents would would got really really they were not they were not happy you were visiting this establishment to play video games. Yeah, so uh, you was a very disobedient. It was really, <laughs> and to be honest, they had their reasons. They, That's right. I, this, this place was like going back and uh, yeah? no no now that I know more about oh. <laughs> deep, deep in the in, 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 in certain aspects of, of Italy. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. A little a little oh, town in Sicily. An, oh, yeah. a little a little yeah. town in Sicily. Yeah. That, I, yeah, that sounds yeah. like a new movie. I really yeah. I like. That a little town in Sicily. Shout out to him playing video games in the Godfather's house. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Goombas out there. So he's not playing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love how he said, "Now that I found out later." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, they yeah. Were and trying to protect me. <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's awesome. little Tashefi. We know him. Come in. <laughs> he's in the back. It's fine. He, he doesn't bother. He, he doesn't him. bother anybody. It's just <laughs> little Tashefi. Don't pay him to mind. <laughs> but on, on jokes aside, so the arcade arcade was still big for you as far as going there. Oh yes, okay, that, that's yeah. Awesome. I really remember like when uh, we know we when we finally had Street Fighter at home and mm -hmm. in the Super yes. Nintendo that was like mm -hmm. um, oh, it's game changing. Big, yes, mm -hmm. and, and you just stayed through it all the way through as far as you know as far as all the way up into um, what generation would you say? Did you taper off at any point, or like, did you go through the, the sixteen bit, the thirty two bit era, like, or did you just like um, PC out? Like, where where did you progress? So I got I got through all of all of them, but I, for me it was mostly uh, the PC. So gotcha. Okay. gotcha. From from that era of the eight and sixteen bit machines, that mm -hmm. that was where I'm most nostalgic and, and fond of. So nice. that, that's where I collect like. Yes. I collect Super Famicom and uh, you know Mega Drive games. And I saw the collection, the sir. It is super mm -hmm. impressive. Uh, super yeah. impressive. Like if anybody, listen, you got to follow Lord Giuseppe's Twitter because 
He's got some retro stuff up there, man. It is classic throwback stuff, man. It, it is it's so good. So it's like you're still able to find this stuff now to this day, right? I'm looking at his yeah. Fallout guy right over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I saw you got a, a, a kind of brand new copy of a Ninja Warriors. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was my latest, latest um, mm-hmm. acquisition. Yep. <laughs> what was that for? Side Scroller Soft? Was it that? What? what that? Ninja Warriors? Was that? Yeah, I, I don't know. Was there an arcade version of Ninja Warriors? Yes, it was yet. an arcade version of Ninja Warriors. Oh, yeah. And when when you start hitting them and the, yeah. um, they they face start coming out and they start turning into robots. To robot. I, yeah. yeah, I played it like last month. I have Yo, it. King, I remember yeah. that game scary yeah. because I didn't know. I thought they were human, but like you said, when they took damage, yeah, the, I believe it was it. And and them? yeah, but Giuseppe uh, in your arcade because I I would play on Forty Second Street and they had three screens and oh, it was yes. the like it was the first sixteen by nine game that you can play. Oh, yeah, it was even longer. It was yeah. Like, that's what the ratio of that game is like it's insane yeah, yeah they showed the whole screen so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh you were able to walk to all three screens i, I remember it because it, it was completely different from what we were playing at the time mm-hmm. right and it showed uh, uh like the, the view because it automatically draws you in but then as you're playing as the ninja and they mm-hmm. start to take damage you notice, oh my God, I'm playing with a robot, robot. at this time, mm-hmm. right? And, and and that was like the game changer because at first you was like, okay, they they they're human, but no, yep. the damage that they were inflicting and they're robots. It was the first like Terminator game. Yeah, it was, was Terminator. I'm like, Ninjas. oh, I'm a Terminator. Yeah. What is this? So, as a kid, I was like scarred by that. I, it messed me up. But you're yeah. right. Like the aspect ratio, right, was so yes. huge. Yes. And at that time, I don't remember a game kind of it was like it that. was no game that had that aspect ratio except if you sat down in the cars like if, if you right. were um mm-hmm. you, like using the cars with the steering wheels yeah. you know you had to pay yeah, two dollars yeah, yeah. to sit down inside <laughs> so when 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 you had those arcade machines mm-hmm. they showed you the big screen but this yeah. was like the first like stand-up machine that yes. had that wide screen and that's who, why it stood out to me do you remember who the developer was i can't remember it's title Taito, yeah, yeah. Taito, yeah. they, they even did like this kind of uh, setup with the three screens. I think they the, there was also a, a Darius game yes. that was had like this the same kind of mm-hmm. uh, super wide yes um, thing going on. Ta- but I never, to be honest, I never mm-hmm. uh, seen uh, one of the mm-hmm. original con ups around. Oh wow! Because obviously, um, yeah, here in um, mm-hmm. in Europe and uh, especially in Italy, we mm-hmm. we so like the actual original like coin up with the, you know the artwork yeah. and the, everything it was quite rare to uh, to yeah. get one of those in the very in the arcade. very rare I would, I would assume expensive too I mean it was such a mm-hmm. unique setup oh, yeah. let me just get the super chats real quick shout out to say yeah. Cedric H with a ten dollar super chat stopping by to show some love salute and then we got Stitch again he keeps thinking we missing his chats he said yeah. five dollar super chat King got his tat why Attic isn't wearing his uniform that was not the deal from her. <laughs> 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 Look, Attic is still waiting. I got, I got to protect Attic. He's still waiting on the trucker hat. That's the holdup. So we need the trucker hat to complete the cipher. And then, um, yeah, King, he, he's all straight. He's just waiting for him to do the video. Man, the man just did an eight-hour thing. Give, give him a break. He, he go put it up, you know what I'm saying, on, on the uh, IOP OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, y'all going to get a chance to see that very soon. I'm just trying to look for um, uh, Ninja. What what was it called again? It's called the Ninja Warriors? Ninja Warriors. Ninja Warriors. Yeah, Ninja, Ninja yeah, King Warriors. King probably has it. Yeah. Um, and the Super Famicom version is, or Super Nintendo version is the the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. That one is, it's a completely different game, but it's also like uh, you know they, sometimes they do this sort of uh, it's a sequel, but it's also a remake of the the first game. Yes. Um, and recently they did that again. There is um, it's on Switch and on PS4. Uh, yes, really? well. yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's it, yeah, it's pretty good as well. It, the the latest remake. Mm-hmm. It's uh, they redrawn the mm-hmm. entire uh, Super Nintendo game. They right. redid the, all the sprites. They redid the soundtrack. Wow. And it's uh, it's amazing. It's, wow, uh, that's what's up, man. So let, let's get into um, splash damage right quick and. Um, I want to talk about like how did that opportunity come about and obviously like splash damage is very unique uh, i feel in the sense of they kind of have their own ips and then they also you guys also help out on like the big games the triple a games as well so like how did that um you know whole thing opportunity come out and also you know what stuff did you work on also during the um your process there like i believe i think gears franchise obviously we know tactics we'll get into that mm-hmm. but um just let us know like the games you've also had 
an involvement with on your journey to, to splash damage so be, before splash damage i i worked many years in uh, in italy even mm -hmm. if, if italy has a very small mm -hmm. uh game dev industry and mm -hmm. Especially when I started. Right now, now there are a few interesting uh, companies mm -hmm. out there. But I started uh, in um, like my, my, I got my first job in the industry in uh, uh, 2007. Okay. Uh, so I, I I actually dropped uh, university just oh, to wow. get the job and like I moved to Milan. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I I I told my parents like, uh, oh yeah, in two weeks I'm moving. Uh, to Milan. And, <laughs> wow! Uh, how did how did that go over, sir? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, quite a discussion. Very, um, <laughs> quite a discussion. <laughs> S similar to the arcade discussion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Interesting. So, so you yeah, just so moved I, to Milan? Wow! Yeah, yeah. I just moved to Milan. I worked on a on a game that even never came out. I think um, mm -hmm. it was uh, back then. It was the the Wii has mm -hmm. just uh, come out. It was like the PlayStation 3, but this yes. game was still like in this development limbo. It was from, for PS2. Uh, okay, what was it there? Give me a name. Give me a name. Uh, it was called the, the Black Corsair. Okay, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So if you Google that, there is probably like a video or something, but mm -hmm. it, it, it was an awful game. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those games that, you, you know, it's uh, that specific era of video games of you know showware when the, you yeah. had a game that had a little bit of everything and it was like a puzzle game it was a, an adventure game it wow was like it's trying to be everything uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah so um, yeah I, I started working on that mm -hmm. uh, then from there I, I worked on many other small companies mm -hmm. and I, I did many years as a freelance in Italy as well gotcha uh, mm -hmm. be before leaving from for UK I mm -hmm. I, I made um, mm -hmm. uh, several uh, mobile games as well the oh, wow. for the iPhone for example I, I did the mm -hmm. I worked on the uh, super bike series that it's um, yes it's a, um, a, a motorbike championship oh yeah motorbike champion almost like a, almost like in a moto GP kind of vein yeah, I, re I remember yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I worked on these S SBK titles nice. uh, for a while, and then I moved uh, here. I mm -hmm. moved here uh, to London. And here, here being uh, London. Here being yes, London. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I actually, and I actually live even uh, super close uh, to the office. Oh, so you're right next to the studio. Uh, so, so nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I live here in Bromley, mm -hmm. and, and I, I moved here in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And I and I yeah I joined Splash Damage um, mm -hmm. after a, a week long of interviews uh, all mm -hmm. over the place in uh, mm -hmm. in the UK. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I got like a, a, a free like a, a week of holiday from my um, mm -hmm. uh, from my job, and I I planned this with my mm -hmm. uh, then uh, girlfriend and now mm -hmm. wife actually, mm -hmm. and, and we yeah that was the uh, we did this crazy week where I will do one interview in a different city, wow. uh, like every day. So it was like uh, one day was Oxford, and then the other day was uh, Sheffield, and the wow. other day was like Leamington, and then then and these are all gaming studios all or gaming companies. Yeah, wow. Yes. So I, because I I did this few interviews, um, you know, uh, using Skype before, mm -hmm. like the. the Initial stuff. So yeah. from there, I got like um, um, a week worth of face-to-face, um, mm face-to-face -hmm. -face, uh, mm -hmm. face -face interviews with uh, with gaming companies in mm -hmm. UK. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, let's uh, let's try this. Nice. And uh, so I do this kind of uh, crazy week mm -hmm. where I, uh, yeah, it was five interviews in a week. So wow. pretty much. So so that. literally, did it come down to splash damage and others, or was splash damage yeah. just kind of blew you away and it was a perfect fit? So I already knew Splash Damage because mm -hmm. I I was a big fan of uh, one of the, the, the their first game, um, uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, Enemy. wow. And Eternity was the the multiplayer uh, part of uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Mm. So I and I played that game for ages. I played mm. mods of that game. I played like uh, so. I, I was a big Splash Damage fan, but mm -hmm. I. Um, yeah, I, I had other opportunities as well, but um, yeah, Splash Damage really got me with uh, their 
the interview I, I did with them was really different, actually. And it's oh, yeah. something that I try to do when I now I do interviews as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was really uh, th there was this human connection with mm -hmm. um, um, with the, the people I, I, I've interviewed. It, there was something that clicked. Mm -hmm. So we, we even started talking about the retro games like, during nice. the interview. At some point. Nice. Uh, um, so I was like, OK, the, this uh, this is a, a cool company. I mm -hmm. like the, the company culture. I mm -hmm. like the I've met here so nice. um nice, that, man. yeah man I mean one thing about like I said just looking at the site and a lot of the information that Splash Damage puts out the, I, I again looking from the outside in you know it seems to have a really cool culture like you guys always seem to be doing putting out these videos and speaking to the developers it feels like very family oriented and they feel like gamers like that I have to admit just again look, looking from the outside in so based on what you're saying it seemed like it resonated you guys had that connection on the interview and then you know the rest was there so as far as you coming in you some of the first projects was it the gears franchise because i mean splash damages catalog i mean it's you guys did the arkham series i mean you know wolfenstein doing at quake like it, you got all the fps and i even think you you, you um you, you did like a seminar or something kind of like um explaining what makes an fps feel good and and moving around so like what was some of the first games as soon as you hit the, hit the ground running with splash damage that you worked on so it was Gears 4. It was Ooh, Gears of War 4. Okay. Um, and actually, I got interviewed uh, for another project. So they mm -hmm. they presented me a different project that mm -hmm. um, we um, that never got past the, the prototype stage. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I was interviewing for that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then one day before starting working on that, um, I got a call and uh, yeah, they, they they told me like, oh, it's fine if we actually move you mm -hmm. to this other project, and they only say the the code name. Right, right, right. I, I was like, uh, okay, do I tell them that I I don't know what that is? Or... <laughs> <laughs> told me, I, so I was like, sure, oh, oh, yeah, that sounds great. And yeah. then I, I and I mean, I I I, I knew that was something uh, gear support related, mm -hmm. but back then I I. I, I thought that it was um, uh, Gears Ultimate Edition. It was like oh, support. Okay. Gears Ultimate, Ultimate, yes, because that was the remake. Yes, yeah. on um, Xbox One. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I was like, okay, so I guess it's going to be like support for Gears Ultimate or something like that. And right. Uh, so just, just so out of mm -hmm. Got it. Just out of curiosity. Well, do you know how hard it's been, Giuseppe? I found this game. I found part two. I've been I've been searching the whole time <laughs> that you that you've been talking. I've been listening and paying attention. But see here, the two three screens is gonna pop up right there. Yep. If you can see it over, and this is the actual one that's running Camera. off of the CR CRT, uh, right here. And um, yeah, this is it right here. See how it has the breakdown of the three screens, mm -hmm. yep. and they had used a special technology that it really wasn't three screens. It really was just two screens mimicking a three screen display. Wow. And and just like you said, uh, the Nintendo came out for Turbo Graphics. It also uh, came out for Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, but they were doing part two. So I found part two, like you said, it, uh, that was on Super Nintendo mm. and I actually found an arcade game. Classic. I, yeah, classic. I just like to bring back your classic, you know, That's for you, up. so. That's what's up. Ninja Warriors in the building, man. So real quick, just before you start, I know Attic, you had a question for just Yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, before you started working on the Gears uh, franchise, was was that a franchise that you, uh, that you played or was it just something that you heard about that you never really had hands on? Oh, no, I actually, I, I got an Xbox 360 just to play uh, wow. Gears 4. So, so it was. It, That's my only. How, how, what was what was the feeling like to work on a franchise or something that you played years ago? It, 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 it's crazy. It's uh, it's something that you, if thinking back at it, it, it's like something that just a few months before I was in Italy, like doing you know mobile games, and uh, I was pretty stressed out. I, I was actually working on a, on a uh, PlayStation 4 game, uh, mm -hmm. but it was like a, an indie uh, title back then. So remember the name? The, remember the name? Yeah, it, it's uh, Bookbound Brigade. It okay. actually came. It, it's uh, something that um, it's out on, like it, they actually released it recently. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's a Metroidvania. It's a 
pretty cool game. Mm -hmm. uh, but what that was obviously like a super small team, and yeah. uh, so it was completely different. And uh, so, uh, and and it was it was something like I I felt like okay, it's either now or never uh, because mm -hmm. it's uh, like I here I I cannot really um, right. This is shot. There, this no is your shot, Giuseppe. There's no room to grow. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, and um, yeah, the interesting stuff was that yeah, when I started, so the first day I was like, okay, no, it's um, actually it's Gears of War four, and that they, I think they just had, there was like E three coming up, yes, and they, there was this mad rush at uh, you know doing the E three um, bug fixing, and they and they, they also later on that they were working on um, we were working on the multiplayer part for the uh, open beta that yes. they, they were. I remember. Well. So there was like this uh, big open beta event and uh so that that was crazy because it, it got announced and uh i mean i i um that i i didn't even knew that splash damage was working on gears of war 4 when i joined right, right. Mm. because they, obviously they you know nda and all that kind of stuff i wasn't to be assigned to, to a different project so they they were like okay right. but, but then yeah when i um uh, I, I was thrilled i was like Super, super happy. <laughs> Obviously, nice. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and just real quick, quick, I gotta ask you because you know we assume a lot of people assume like you know coalition is just hands on with it. Like, so is it a situation where coalition says, "Hey, we need more hands on deck. Let's bring in Splash Damage. You guys come." Like, how does that work? Because technically, it, the Gears fan franchises with coalition, correct? Oh yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. The coalition is the, the 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 main developer. Because like technically contractors working for the game. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, yeah, we helped on the, the multiplayer. Um, nice. Um, part of the game, we did um, many multiplayer maps. We right. uh, so even uh, post launch, there was a, a team at Splash Damage that uh, did many of the Gears of War four multiplayer maps mm -hmm. uh, um, for for a year um, post right. post launch. Okay. Uh, or something like that so um, uh, yeah um and then we um uh, when when we shipped uh, gears of war 4 like right. the, the team got, got kind of uh split into uh, uh two so there was um a, a part supporting gears of war 4 and another part uh, trying out this new project that then become Gears tactics got you okay so you you transitioned right in as yeah, far as from yeah. four to tactics. Now, five, not as much, but, just, but four and tactics were you. Yes. Exactly. Got you. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, five as an, another uh, team at Splash Damage that it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's working on. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's let's transition right on in, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Gears Tactics, man. Oh, wow. Like, just pretty much, you know, so much to talk about. I mean, obviously, we talked about offline you know how we feel about about the franchise and stuff like that us being like huge turn based you know strategy kind of guys but um like just give give me give me that whole process there because um you know you you come in from a whole situation where you know you have this iconic franchise like you worked on 4 right and it's never been in this genre it's never been yeah, in this Format. I'd assume switching from a third person to a turn-based strategy game is a huge different type of feeling. Right. So you, you got this, you got this new IP, you, you guys responsible for this lore. Like, like explain like how 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 difficult or that is maybe to, 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 to translate that into that, that style of a game. Well, it, it, it was um, it was tricky, but uh, we it was also uh, I mean, it, it was kind of weird because mm -hmm. uh, Gears is a franchise that you can really, um, like the elements of the game, like mm -hmm. the, this, uh, it's it's obviously it's cover based. So there is all all the there is already like you you can tell by playing a multiplayer match, for example, mm -hmm. that they have that kind of uh, oh I need to flank the enemy and it yes. like get mm -hmm. over. There is all that that stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it was almost natural to just uh, you know mm. bring the camera up and see like uh, okay what's going on here and uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of already worked but mm -hmm. then you, you need to uh, hire now the the design and and that's uh, like uh, mm -hmm. yeah we, we had an amazing team on on that game both on on splash damage on and mm -hmm. on the side of the the coalition mm -hmm. and it was a different project also because for us it was a, a game that is actually 
while um, the uh, the past years years games it's uh, uh, it was us helping out right in, in this this project was this is you we, yeah we we own the the game we designed the game we, we created mm. this ground up. So, and, so uh, let, let me let me back up one second. I, I, you're dro- dropping a major point there, because like you said, this is you. Like you guys designed the game. Like, how does that conversation happen? That they, you know, the coalition comes to you guys and say, "We want you to make this for us." Like, how does that happen? Because that is a big deal. Like, to to have this, the responsibility of this. This is your IP, right? This is splash damage IP in a sense, right? So, to be honest, I don't think all the. Uh, I don't know all the details there. Okay. What. Uh, really happen and from my point of view mm-hmm. we got this I, I i know i knew that you know when when this kind of stuff happens it's uh it's mm-hmm. always like um um I, I i knew that this idea of uh you know the uh tactics games was um um someone at, at the coalition i i, I think uh mm-hmm. tyler then he, he becomes yes. the uh the creative director mm-hmm. of the, the and the other people mm-hmm. had uh, they, they wanted to do this um, right. this project, so right. it was from from them. But mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm just speculating here gotcha. uh, because uh, I I got into the project when it was, um, you know, th- these things happen in the in the background, and gotcha. then you got the project signed, and you go like, okay, th- this this new thing, <laughs> this is what it is. Okay, okay. So like, I mean, but when you got the news, obviously, to what it was, and it, this, it's tactics, it's in this, you know, universe, like, you know, how, how did those meetings start? Because from what I hear, you know, this thing started out conceptually as a board game. <laughs> That's what I, I was told. Right. So like, that... and uh, I think it was uh, on Game Informer. I, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. remember the, the, the site. But if you Google, mm-hmm. um, a board game gear statics or something like that mm-hmm. um it will probably come up with uh, some photos as well mm-hmm. um and yeah one of the, the the very first prototype of the game was uh we um yeah our designers uh did this uh completely functional board game mm-hmm. um by also uh, reusing the the miniatures from uh, uh the gears of war tabletop game as well mm-hmm. so it gotcha. was, uh, pretty cool and uh mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, from there you you could already see some of the concept of the game already you know working. So okay, uh, yeah, dope, dope. So so um, I got a question real quick. I don't know if you, uh, you'll have any knowledge to this. Like when it comes to how closely was you guys working with Coalition? Like was it like the biggest thing I think I really have is like, was there certain things that they wanted, like the animations to go, like the lore of the game? Like, was there a lot of things that you would, that your studio would collaborate with Coalition to come off like a middle ground? Right. I mean, the, the Coalition is, um, they, they, um, you know, they uh, are the gear support developer. So right. obviously they have to approve everything mm-hmm. and the, everything has to be proper Gears of War right. that you have to nail this Gears of War feeling. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was um, and uh, yeah, the collaboration we had with them, it was uh, really hands on. So okay. they, they, they were um, so pretty, pretty much let me let me, ask you, as, let me ask you a quick in reference to that. Like, so let's just say you guys conceptually had an idea. Could the coalition be like, look, we don't want this part. We don't want this <laughs> in here. You know, it, but, was of that course, type of situation? I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's something that normally happens when you develop a game. There, are, for every everything that goes into the game, there's probably hundred things that mm-hmm. you know didn't in a way because like uh, you, you have this iteration phases and you have mm-hmm. uh, there is always like this thing, especially at the start of the development of a game, mm-hmm. you. You, you don't know really what you are what the final product is going to look like right. you you can get your best guess you can try you you prototype mm-hmm. things you prototype certain mechanics you you prototype certain things but you um there is only one point in, in the development phase where you go like oh okay this is this is work this is fun right mm-hmm. and, uh, and you start like um putting this uh, different pieces together and and then you you get a game you get mm-hmm. this very 
the sensation like okay this is a, actually a game mm -hmm. uh but be, be, before that in in every project it's not not, not just the uh, gear statics it's mm -hmm. there is this uh this phase of uh continuing continuous discovery of right. uh you know what you are going to do especially when you don't are you are not working on a, on a direct sequel of something correct mm -hmm. uh, mm. so when you yeah it's a uh, completely uh, uncharted waters you so it's just like discovery as you're going on you're like oh, okay this actually works mm -hmm. this can actually do this uh how, how does it feel when you discover something that actually works and actually makes it into the game Oh, it, it's great. It's um, it, it's a great feeling, especially when you see something uh, um, that that the whole team goes like, "Oh, this is a, a game changer." This Can is you like, give us an example yeah. of such um, said game changer? Yeah, that, that was definitely my question because it's like, wait, when you look at Gears Tactics, like it takes a lot of the conventions of an XCOM game and sort of it fits them into ge the Gears world in a way that only works sort of for Gears, like the things yeah. that you guys did with Overwatch, the things you guys did with like Line of Sight. It, it It's different in a way that, you know, looking at it from the outside, you're like, man, I don't know if this is going to work. So yeah, I do like appreciate that. They're like there's, there's a lot of people who like to take the XCOM formula mm -hmm. and do very little to nothing. Right. <laughs> but okay. you guys like, you took that, you know, that foundation that they built that game off and was like, all right, what can we do to make it Gears like? Yes. And, and, you know, you made it aggressive because that's how Gears is. You made it gory because that's how Gears is. Mm -hmm. You based it around the execution because that's how Gears is. Like, yeah. you don't really see people try to, uh, you know, you people see try to adapt, not evolve. Right. That, yeah. that, that system. I, I got a question. Yeah. Right. Who idea was it that after the execution, you get to have an extra turn. <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> I think that is probably... Game changer. It, 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 it forces you to want to get that execution off mm -hmm. so you could actually have another turn mm -hmm. to get your man either back on the cover or actually back in <laughs> position for an attack or a flank or, or mm -hmm. something of that nature. And so. sometimes you'll get put in a horrible position where you have snipers on you and stuff. And you was like, the only reason, the only way I'm breaching them is if I kill at least three of these in some kind of lethal, gruesome way. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, I'll have to like throw a grenade and be like, please just go down. Don't blow up. Just go down. Just don't, don't blow up. Just go <laughs> down. Like, <laughs> Good, Giuseppe. What do you, what do you, what I, do you I, do? I don't, I don't have an, a name for that specific feature. I think it was just a, you know, mm -hmm. something that, um, I, I don't remember who was that, that yeah. actually yeah. was this the mechanic itself, but it was something that really changed the, the game for us as well. It was one of those moments of clarity where, mm -hmm. You implement something and you you discover oh whoa yeah that's that, it <laughs> yeah I, I could yeah. just see you guys now like when you put that what, what I, i'm sure i'm not a dev but i'm sure like when you try new ideals and you mm -hmm. play that first build with that new ideal mm -hmm. you guys probably look around it's like this is it yeah, this, this works is this it. works <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's so cool though because besides the 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 executions that keep you going again right you have that again because let's be real it, this thing is overwhelming odds. If anybody doesn't play Grizz Tactics in the realm, when you guys get to play it on console, and yes, just know he, he wants me to ask, when is it coming to console? I don't know if he could ask that, but they keep bugging me to ask you that. We'll get to it. Yeah, so, I mean, I, uh, it, it's, I mean, they, they say it soon, um, mm -hmm. but I it's something I, I can't yeah, discuss. So, yeah. even because so we'll, 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 we'll go with Sue. We we'll go with Sue. We ain't we'll go with you in trouble. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's like, you, you guys know in the chat he can't answer that. Exactly. Like, <laughs> shit, no. Come on, man. But look, at the, at the end of the day, what makes it so cool, like I said, the overwhelming odds to going again, but also little nuances that I like you guys. Like, when I'm playing an XCOM game, I'm used to throwing on Overwatch a lot, right? So you go on Overwatch, and pretty much anything that comes in the vicinity, you can shoot. Not in tactics. Tactics, you have to physically aim your vision cone mm -hmm. down a specific path. And you have to be guessing. And, and it feels more realistic. So it's just not like this, I can see everything and I can react to everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, kind well, of thing. So, yeah. So Overwatch was my, was my baby. Ooh, let's go! <laughs> Talk about it! I, I, it's, it's, it's a feature that I um, that I wanted from, I think, day, day one. Like, uh, it's something that we probably tried, like, doing in this uh, paper prototype a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's something that, it's one of the 
um, very healthy features that I I knew that I I, I the wanted. game needed it. Uh, yes, I've noticed game yeah. game types like that if they don't have Overwatch, I'm automatically not as interested. Like, mm-hmm. but, but, but even the, the concept yeah. of the cone of vision, yeah, it was something that. that I I already knew that I I wanted to do that mm. that, that way. Mm. So there was obviously a discussion with the the designers. Um, mm. But I think everyone was uh, very interested in, in trying uh, this stuff out, and right. uh, it, it was one of the first things I I've implemented. So I implemented wow. this. this it will... mm-hmm. And you can see in the um, mm-hmm. in the, when the game was uh, announced at E3, mm-hmm. um, the very there is a, a very early video of the the game, mm-hmm. uh, and one of the feature was the the. the this Overwatch cone, yeah, uh, in, a, in a in a different shape on you know, the it, it looked a little bit different from the mm-hmm. uh, the version we we shipped, uh, yeah. but it was like already there, and that that build was really early on uh, in the in the project. Gotcha. What what I appreciate about the Overwatch is like once again, like you guys didn't just take Overwatch from everything, like you made it your own. You gave it the cones, and what I like is I was talking to Cognito and. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I was I was like, man, it's like sometimes when I'll be Overwatch and I have like these assault rifles, I only I rarely go to the end of the the Overwatch because I noticed that if you go to the end, you're gonna miss every shot. Mm-hmm. So like yes. I'll bait it's them bad. in the whole corners and I'll put it like literally two feet in front of me. Yeah. But the thing the thing that's unique about it that I, I want to give you credit, Giuseppe, is not only the way you as a player use it, it's the way the enemy uses it because the enemy sometimes can have you dead to rights. But what they'll do is they'll box you in three or four and they'll have Overwatch Castle. Like, hey, if you move over there, you're getting shot. If you move over there, you're getting shot. Like, the enemy is very aggressive with trapping, I feel. Mm-hmm. Like, that aspect of the AI is pretty brutal and amazing. And, like, I just want to talk about that process of not only, again, the enemy is so many enemies, right? So more of them, but just this aggressive overwatching, like, with that. Like, how did, could you explain a little bit of, of that thought process? Sure. Um, so yeah, our AI team uh, was uh, really great <laughs> in, in, in this project, uh, and uh, um, there will be a, uh, um, uh, I think it's called uh, Epic Fast. Yeah. Uh, soon there will be a presentation on the AI system by mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. lead AI uh, mm-hmm. programmer. Uh, that will go into details, like on, on how the end because the. Another thing is that the enemies also move all at the, at the same time as yes. well. So it's, they, we have all this many enemies on screen because we can have all these combo moves that mm-hmm. they do where they, they group. They be getting they... on my nerves, man. <laughs> they, they, they really do. I'll be getting so tight because like they'll come out of those uh, those little emergency, emergency holes, holes and then the first thing they do is go over to my people and be like, overwatch them. I'm always, <laughs> they can't move. And, 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 and the funny thing is like they'll overwatch them and then the, I, I, you know, I'll use like an assault with an invis mm-hmm. to get around it. Mm-hmm. And then the moment I do that, they, they just start shooting everyone else. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow. Just like, they, they, I, this is the most aggressive AI I've ever I've seen ever in seen. these type of games. I, I have a question. It, it feels it feels aggressive, but it's uh, to be honest, there are I'm, there are some rules that are um, so. For example, they, they if they DBNO you, they cannot kill you in the same turn. Like oh, that's turn. interesting. Or um, uh, for example, when they I have noticed when they do Overwatch, they don't shoot you. Like they, yes, they exactly they do that. Or another thing is that when they uh, they if they just appeared, so if they just dropped from the sky right. or from hill or something, they are not going to shoot you directly. Okay. Okay. To just position them. Which that makes sense. Yeah, because that would be completely just, unfair. Just yeah. I have a question. Uh, is this aggressive AI from the AI team? Uh, a direct challenge or a direct result of the great game testers you guys had there because i'm pretty sure like if y'all had a board and it got past it the ai team was like okay you know what um <laughs> ramp it up a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> so so we could teach like, them not to like pass they clearly the got past easy. this part right here this middle part yeah i want a sniper here a sniper here not a sniper here we don't want them passing that middle part <laughs> like yeah mm-hmm. Is it, is it, did you have great game testers or, uh, you know, um, the animation, who, whoever was on the offensive side, because I called, you know, the AI, the defense, right? Mm -hmm. So whoever was on the offensive side, did you have great players there that formed a a fantastic defensive AI team 
that uh, had to sit there and get mechanics to to see what they did to break down the game to make sure because I think this tactics is probably one of the tightest tactical type of games that I've seen play or has played. So yeah, the 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 whole QA department in uh, in video games it's they are like the unsung heroes in, in a way of uh, game development really right. because it's um it, it's a grilling work it's a uh, it, it, sometimes like testing games it's uh uh you know it, it's not as as fun as uh you mm-hmm. you can think like oh okay i'm just playing the game but it's mm-hmm. it really involves like uh mm-hmm. uh, uh testing and knowing really the game inside out at, mm-hmm. at that point and mm-hmm. really you know going and uh and, and besides that there is also like, obviously the mm-hmm. you have to the, the game is in development it, it changes a lot and there are mm-hmm. Bugs, obviously there are like uh, uh, mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds of like bugs and stuff mm-hmm. that breaks every time and so that's that's yeah. normal like game development but inside that not only you have to you know find bugs and the repro bugs and so on but you also have to um mm-hmm. play the game at, at that level and by the end of production yeah we have some testers that were mm-hmm. You know, speed running the game, and uh, <laughs> there was people uh, even in the in, in my in my team uh, mm-hmm. and, um, that were like completely yeah they, they knew everything they knew like all the builds and you know how mi- how to min max a certain class or uh, all all that kind of uh, stuff mm-hmm. inside out yeah. uh, mm-hmm. even, even stuff that the designers were like oh you can actually do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know how I knew that you guys did it. Mm-hmm. I, I was doing one of the first missions is when the first boomer showed up with the uh uh what's that gun called the boom sti- boom, shot. boom, boom shot. shot yeah the boom yeah. shot boom. and i remember killing him and, uh i killed him with a shotgunner and i remember going up there and it's like oh you could pick this up yes. and i remember the animation <laughs> to him hitting it's the exact same one from gears uh-huh. and i was like Yo, that they did. Up, they did. Like, yeah. and not to mention, I hate those things. I can't. Yeah. Every time they came up, I remember there was a boss fight I was on. You guys kept throwing one of those at me every turn, and yeah. I was like, "They know I hate these things. I really <laughs> could not stand them." Like, it's funny that you mentioned the boss fight. So, in, in, talking about the aggressiveness of, of the characters, the boss fights were uh, were hair pull, pulling inducing sometimes. <laughs> like, so, how, how did you guys come up with how, balancing? those type those fights in the game as opposed to regular campaign sort of uh, engagements so to be honest the boss fights were one of the few aspects of the game that i rarely touched oh, I, okay. I worked a lot on the uh um, mission gameplay and mm-hmm. uh, you know i i did the the character customization i did uh, mm-hmm. some uh, lots of the stuff involving the abilities and the mm-hmm. uh you know the characters themselves mm-hmm. um the boss fights were we we had several we had like a um, few people fully focused on uh, mm-hmm. on on designing the the boss fight and mm-hmm. making uh, as cool as possible. Gotcha. And, that that uh, last boss fight was rough. Man. Yeah, we lost the boss <laughs> fights are amazing. I was sweating. I look like I beat him on my second try, but it was like one of those things where it's like if he doesn't die this turn, I'm gonna have to do it again. Yeah. Like <laughs> it, it is tr- it truly man, and, and it. it I want to just get to it because my whole thing is again for people who have not played tactics yet. There's a lot of our guys, a lot of guys in the realm that they're, they're console guys, and you know on PC we've got a chance to experience this. But it's like okay, not only is the production value people don't understand like the production value you guys are using for these cinemas in between the game outstanding. The gameplay is frenetic, it's fast, you know, and it's overwhelming. You got that aspect. Like Sov said, the boss fights, in my opinion, are by far the best boss fights I've ever seen in any tactics type of game. So, like, for me, I guess my question is, what what is the part, part of Gears Tactics that you're most proud of? Like, that you are more pro- most proud of either working on or dealing with? Uh, for me, um, I have two, actually. One of okay. the is the... Um, well, the one I'm most proud of is the uh, the combat. Really, mm. it's the moment to moment like uh, combat. You have the, the sheer amount of abilities that you mm-hmm. that you can use, and uh, yes. um, how and how fluid everything feels. Mm-hmm. So, like moving your units, shooting, and uh, mm-hmm. all using all these uh, disabilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was something I really uh, cared about. Mm. Uh, like. Uh, 
having this keeping everything like uh, this kind of uh, level of uh, polish and and fluidity that yes. uh, really uh, because the, yeah as you say the production values is uh, oh, yeah. uh on part of a uh, mainline gears game big and, time uh, what so was that unreal you, engine 4 to brother cinemas bro yeah it, it's <laughs> the same engine as the uh, gears 5 Ooh, so fantastic uh, yeah. And, uh, and 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 yeah, and then obviously you know there is a lot of at stake there. The, with the coalition is like it, it, they were doing the Gears Five, and uh, you know they expect the Gears quality from us as well. So right. um, and then and, and so having you know the, the kind of uh, sometimes in this kind of games you you can close an eye, and uh, you know if your units are like glitching a little bit, and uh, you know. It, <laughs> When a turn ends and the camera like stutters a little bit, in 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 this kind of games, it's something that uh, happens often. Mm -hmm. In um, in gear static, it was like something that we uh, we couldn't tolerate. It was gotcha. something that everything had to be at the level of, of polish. Oh yeah, it it, um, it, it, it is. Seen. So and that, that was really hard, even because the the game is also it's not grid based as well. That right. That we did uh, heavily on. You just go as many times as you can until you can't go until uh, you run out of those action points. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Which too most most of those games you can only move and shoot. On that game, like it, it's encouraged. Like the way you put that, you didn't want to go with that direction because mm -hmm. you wanted to outnumber us, and you can't outnumber us without letting us shoot four times in a row. Like yeah, facts. Otherwise, it'd be completely unfair. Shout out to Squirrely Dan. With the canadian to us but july 23rd is soon shout out to lady era cuts for the win she's a huge tactics fan giuseppe she said huge gears fan here and love tactics great job hope we can get more games in the future gears in this genre just makes you, sense. you know what's funny she told me after she played that that she beat the game first off which mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't mm -hmm. and she told me that when she played gears 5 mm -hmm. she saw the battlefield different because of how she played Gears Tactics. And she right. said it made her a better player in Gears 5. Like, mm -hmm. Now, Giuseppe, it's funny you said because it's funny Addict said it too, because like it's well received. It's get, obviously, our console guys, we can't, they can't wait to get a hold of it. But my question is, like, how did it feel when Phil, we call him Phil Dominus Spencer, put Phil the Dominus Maximus. Max, sir. excuse me, excuse me. Yes, sir, yeah, okay. Correction, <laughs> correction. Please. Phil Dominus Maximus, soon to possibly be Aurelius. No, it's not possibly. Soon to be a really good guy. Let's, like, let's, 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 let's keep the respect just, on his just name. Just like King respect. say it. Let yeah. King say it. Don't X, say yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Xbox's Phil only Dominic's begotten son. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're huge thank fans you. of Phil here, obviously, in a row. But my, my question to you is, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this genre. At every, we're all huge fans of this genre, right? How did it feel to get Phil Spencer to tweet I just finished Gear Tactics, you know, salute the splash damage, salute the you guys. Like, how does that kudos feel as a studio when the boss is playing your game and tweeting it and saying that you guys did a phenomenal and, job? And you know it was good, man, because he don't jump off Destiny for nothing. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he played Destiny. So let's, let's talk about it. How did it feel? What was the studio energy like, Giuseppe? I, it was amazing. It was uh, really, like, it, it's one of the those things that, uh, you know, especially... Um, um, I, I know I know a few people in the studio are like huge Xbox fans, and mm -hmm. they probably have printed that and uh, put that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, it it, mm -hmm. it was really um, mm -hmm. incredible, even, even because um, it's it's the kind of things where mm -hmm. um, you don't even. It's the kind of things that you don't even imagine when you start like doing a game like this. Mm. That, well, yeah, one day, you know, the head of Xbox is, mm. is going to, yeah. You know, I, I mean, besides the obviously the the marketing for the game, but, yes. uh, mm -hmm. but that, that, that's actually like personal. He, he he didn't have to, you know, to actually play the game. And, exactly. Uh, Let's be real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I I mean, um, I know that mm -hmm. Phil, Phil Spencer is a is a is a big gamer. Is mm -hmm. uh, he really knows his stuff, and mm. uh, and that's uh, I mean it. In a way, it was a surprise, but it was also not a surprise that he cares that that much that he actually, you know, 
plays the, the yeah, yeah that, that's it, awesome. gears tactics isn't an easy game it's, it's definitely yeah. one of the harder games in the platform yes absolutely. in the genre so for phil to be finishing that salute to phil what is gaming his for game anyone to really finish yeah. that you know that genre I, like then that you're I ain't ashamed to say I had to redo and respect my characters towards the end because that I boss did too. Was, I did that too. Boss was like, it, it, it was one of those things where the first time he beat me, it was so extra. I just sat. I was like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Right. But I had to sit there. I was like, all right. I mm-hmm. didn't respect anyone the whole game, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm about to respect every single person here. And I went in there. It's like I barely mm-hmm. beat him. Like no, no. my sniper, because I was doing like half his health every turn with that sniper. And then that last time, I used every ability. I used Nate to put more points oh, yeah. on everyone. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm killing him this turn oh, yeah. because he's killing me next turn. Now, like, now, now Lord, just I have to ask a question. It's not going to be nice, but I have to ask it. <laughs> My question is, all right, the, the, the game is for that. We love this game. However, there's one aspect of this game that I hope that you're not responsible because I want to strangle this person who dealt all of this, which is... Side missions. <laughs> now, granted, when they first appeared on the screen, I said, okay, I did a couple of missions. All right, this is cool. Something different, whether it be, you know, free the prisoners or control points <laughs> and stuff like that. And as the game went on, these missions started to appear more frequently. Then they weren't side if missions anymore. <laughs> they were mandatory missions that if I don't complete them, I cannot advance the story. Lord Giuseppe, who, whose idea was this? <laughs> With the side <laughs> missions of Gears Tactics. raise his hand. <laughs> <laughs> who's responsible? Uh, I, you could be vague. Like, we ain't asking for names. You're still, so if you, it was you, Giuseppe, what? you're still invited back. But I have to know. So, <laughs> there is one thing in this kind of game. I'm, I'm uh, a big uh, fan of the genre so yes. i i started playing uh this kind of games with uh ufo the the original XCOM. Oh, uh, yes. um, i even have a, a signed copy uh from wow. julian golub uh, wow and and i, I mean i am i i played like mm-hmm. almost every game of in this genre really mm-hmm. uh during these years Mm-hmm. And um, and one big thing that I really like mm-hmm. uh, in this genre is that this kind of um, the, the subtly, I mean, it, it, mm-hmm. um, that one thing is this kind of um, having this kind of uh, strategy layer, yes. and then you have the your actual uh, campaign missions and right. uh, that kind of stuff. Um, in, uh, in in gears, I mean, this but this having this complex strategy layer really adds to the overall mm-hmm. um, complexity of the game and difficulty. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think in, 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 in Gear Statics, they just wanted something that was a little bit more streamlined. Okay. Um, so that was more easy, more story driven. Right. Um, and it definitely then, uh, was it, a very it, narrative focused game. Yeah, the, the, I, I, I love the you. narrative. It's, I love it's that just part. started. It's it's hard to you know when you, you're doing this and you're balancing the game, mm-hmm. I, I it's hard to nail like the perfect spot where you you don't overdo gotcha. like with, with you know with the with the content with the side missions and you do, mm-hmm. you you still keep the mm-hmm. uh, or you you have a game that is too short for example. I, or, okay. Or okay. I feel and like especially because at the end of the game the the, the thing is also. It's when the game offers you, you have at that point in Act 3, you have mm-hmm. all these abilities, you have um, your units, you have like every mm-hmm. everyone there. So uh, that's where the game actually beca- it, it's the most fun mm-hmm. in a way because you, you can use all the abilities, you have uh, like right. all this stuff unlocked. Absolutely. So, I, uh, mm-hmm. but obviously, it's uh, it's it's just difficult to nail down the the, the perfect like length of the. I feel you. Uh, so basically, the, it became think, a length issue. Good. I, I got another question. Whatever. Yeah, I think that that people, a lot of reviewers and stuff, because I read a couple reviews, is just like that. It was mandatory, but I know why you guys did it. You guys mm-hmm. did it because those bosses would be overwhelming if you didn't, you know, get them to play more right. content to get more levels to fight the boss. Right. I think that, you know, if you would have gave them the option to skip it and get there and get destroyed, they would have went back and did it anyway. Right. So, uh, yeah. but you obviously when you're, when you're thinking of a blank play, cause the game isn't made at this point, you have to like, you don't see it till after it's done. Right. And, you know, I do understand where people were coming from that. Cause it was, a, it was bothering me a little bit, but the gameplay was so good that I was scared 
I, I was looking past it because I wanted to play the game. But when I got to that last chapter, I that was last like, chapter, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, because because you guys, not only were you made, like doing having us do the side missions, you were putting a handicap on us at the yes, last. Yeah, some of them it was were like, brutal. It was like we're gonna we're gonna send two people in there, man. Yeah, that one two with people the snipers. In. You only got you can only take two people. You have to take like like all right. This is the thing, just like. I, I love the aspect where, because let's be real, you start, like you said, you start getting overpowered, you start getting the abilities, you can start handling the battlefield, right? Easy. Easy. And then you guys knew that. So you said, okay, you know what, this last chapter, we know they can handle the situation. Let's take, let's make them uncomfortable. Yeah, it, it was like, but it, it, the part I did like is it forced me to take other characters. Because they'd be like, yo, for this mission, you got to use Gabe. Or this mission, you can't use this one. And like, it made you use specific things. And I was cool because I had my other units built up. I had an artillery guy. He was built up. I had like a lot of suppression and all that. So I was good. The only thing that was kind of brutal, they'd be like, you can only use two people. You got to evacuate them. Ten turns. Good luck. <laughs> I, I would literally, there were certain scenarios where I could only get like all my men but one. It would be like the random dude that was really good, yeah. but he wasn't a named character. And I'd be like, that's good. I'd be like, oh, well, rest in peace. Because like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing this mission like, over. It's out, man. He's done. He's over. He's dead. I'm not coming back for it. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that, what, what did you feel about that aspect of the, of the game design? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, if I um, I were to do um, another tactics games, I I would like to focus on having a, a more um, like a, a implementing this kind of uh, you know strategy layer that even if you have this kind of uh, reputation in in this kind of games, you mm -hmm. uh, you your main campaign in even in XCOM is uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's like. Yeah, Way it's the gameplay that carries the whole game. 20. Yeah, exactly. I think it, what... it's exactly that. Mm -hmm. So you you just have to find a way so that um, the um, mm -hmm. the repetition of the missions don't really wait on the yes. players too much yes. because they they can actually choose. You know, okay, I don't want to do like a rescue mission. Maybe I, I want to do. Like no, I always want to do those rescue missions. Or... Those people and they were beast. Every single time I rescued one of them, I was like, I'm using him. <laughs> yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think the you know the reason XCOM doesn't have that issue is because they base building. Mm -hmm. So when you do a mm -hmm. mission, you feel like you have another like reason to do the mission. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like you yeah. guys have uh, you guys put all the pressure on like the characters themselves. Like you want to build the ultimate character. And once the characters are built, it's like now it's just like you're spending the last chapter with ultimate characters just trying to survive at this point. Right, like, right. So I, I do think that was one of the reasons that that uh, because yeah, this is the... mm -hmm. good. Just Sorry. Sorry. No, this is one of the it. few games that I've seen like this that was built around a narrative mm -hmm. so that that really helped it. Yeah, yeah, just happy. Yeah, you have you have other games like like this, but they are more. Uh, I mean, there's um, another one I, I played that. Um, uh, it's called the uh, Mutant Year Zero. That's very. Oh yes. Story oh, yeah, I beat that. But it's also. Um, I, I mean, I love that game, but um, it's brutal. <laughs> it, it's focused more on like you have these fixed characters. You don't have that many like you. Yeah. There's almost yeah, no character. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a, it's just this and. Uh, um, they focus that, that game around abilities. Yeah. yeah. That game is absolutely brutal because of the permadeath. It, uh, that game had me so frustrated. Like if I, if I lost the duck guy, I was the uh, exact opposite. I was like the only one that's not expendable is the duck guy. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't care about this dude. Like he was good mm -hmm. with his mutant level, up, but I was like, if he mm -hmm. dies, so be it. listen. No, I, I I got really pissed. I reset that game. I haven't finished that game yet, so you know, full disclosure, mm -hmm. I reset it a, a, a thousand times because they keep killing him for me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I get really pissed off. I but, felt with Gabe, yeah. man. Salute the Gabe. Like, I feel he's the, the 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 hot new protagonist, even though. Yeah, I do think that you guys. <laughs> it's like you know, this is me. This is everyone's opinion. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to have to make a better protagonist than the current protagonist? <laughs> Listen, we gotta bring Gabe, we gotta bring Gabe Diaz back for 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 Gears Tactics too, man. You got come on now, Seb. Talk to him, who you gotta talk to. He, he was definitely a good character. Right? He was definitely a good character. Yeah, man. How you feel about Gabe? How the studio feeling about Gabe moving forward? 
Um, <laughs> you don't gotta add to that, man. I'm, try, I'm trying to set you up. I'm trying to trip you up, Giuseppe. You gotta fall for this. No, no there's a, there's an interesting thing I, I can say about um, Gabe that I um, in, indirectly I think I, um, mm -hmm. I I named him in a way. Wow. So um, I mean, um, they were doing a, our a creative director uh, mm -hmm. back then was doing a you know a big list of names mm -hmm. and uh see like oh you you can propose some names for the the main characters and mm -hmm. uh, and everyone else so everyone was adding names mm -hmm. and um uh, and i i i i added uh, gabriel in, in the list as well <laughs> uh so i they picked that one so Woo! yeah confirmed directly responsible for gabe the best protagonist <laughs> in gears currently right now salute yeah he's definitely <laughs> But like that's, he, the, that's the only thing I can say about He, he reminds me of like the old regime of Gears. Yeah. Like Beast. Beast, man. Great story. But great. I I love the the work that the team did on the characters. Yes. I, I worked uh, with um, the character art theme. Oh. There's this great uh, art book that they uh, that they did as well that mm -hmm. contains a, a lot of information and mm -hmm. uh, you know the concept art. Oh. And um and yeah, yeah, I'm I was daily like i was really amazed at, at the, the quality uh that um our artist just uh phenomenal, uh, phenomenal. Uh, and um mm -hmm. and also the, the the fact that the the characters are fully customizable yes because well. like, i would put like well. silly designs i would have like american flags with with dots and weird colors and give people purple outfits and then you see them in the cinema it, it was funny i just i would just yeah. go full customization a lot and of that that was a, a lot of work as well because uh, obviously you have to to think that even the cinematics you know oh this shot doesn't work because there's now a big shoulder pad that uh, <laughs> like you know they uh -huh. someone can equip and uh, mm -hmm. all this uh, so there was a, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. um work and the there was this mad attention of detail nice. there that the, the entire thing was really focused mm -hmm. on. Okay, this we we have to uh, mm -hmm. see this cinematic with this specific armor on, and mm -hmm. if that works. And uh, mm -hmm. they, they were bugging like you know, the, oh, this is clipping with this other thing, mm -hmm. and then uh, we need to disable this during the cinematic, and gotcha. uh, all, all that kind of uh, mm -hmm. crazy level of the detail and and care. Mm -hmm. I definitely like that chick from uh, Gears Tactics, the extra one, the oh, one yeah, with I the sniper. Yeah, yeah, she her. she didn't she didn't think she just did. Yeah, like, yeah. So we ain't gonna spoil. Time, we ain't gonna spoil. Yeah, that one time I'm not really spoiling anything. Come on, that yeah, console yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm about to spoil the story for the console dude. Spoil anything. I would say that one time where stuff was going down, and she's like, nah, then you just bam. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely, absolutely. So, look, real quick, last question before we move on. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. But um, there's, there's a big thing going on right now in the industry, Giuseppe. And I got to ask you, because you are the lord of coding and programming. You've worked on games before. So, I got to ask this, because uh, Phil Spencer was in the news uh, recently, and um, he made some comments. And, and a lot of it came down to, you know, game design and consoles, you know, um, people saying that they may be held back, you know what I'm saying? Because of, you know, work, I guess with the Series X uh, situation, you know, that obviously they're still gonna be supporting the base consoles, you know what I'm saying? So being that you've developed before and you've worked on multiple platforms before, like, you know, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to work on the new hardware exclusively? What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel that gaming has changed, you know, as far as scalability? Like, what's your whole thought? Because this is like a hot debate right now in the gaming community. So I'm just curious to see where, what side you fall on here. I, I, to be honest, I don't get this. Uh, I, I mean, I am, um, it's something that always uh, came up and they, it's, it's like this, kind of uh let's call them cross-gen games yes are they have always been a thing it's not mm. like the first time that we have this kind of uh, mm. Mm -hmm. situation it's actually easier now because now the the other is um so so close mm -hmm. that um you, you can actually now you you can create a game for uh for ps4 mm -hmm. or uh a, 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 a xbox and uh you can just to make it run on the um, next gen console uh, in a way that it's way easier compared to, for example, you know, mm. a, a PlayStation 2 game and a, mm. a PS3 game. Mm. So, but but the these cross gen games are, have always been a thing. So if mm. you, I, I remember like, I mean, even GTA 5, for example, or you know, GTA 4 as well. I, I think 
uh, was uh, another game like that. Mm -hmm. Or I remember like, um, you know, the, the, the million times they ported Skyrim to from one console <laughs> to the other, right. and uh, <laughs> that that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it, it, it's just something that happens because when you uh, th these games uh, take years to make. So right. when you are releasing a new console, there mm -hmm. are you have to think that most of the studios are not working directly mm -hmm. in a game that it's it's not it's not going to be an exclusive for that console because mm. they started development like three mm. four years ago mm. where that console was not even uh you know the other was not even uh right um locked down right so so obviously they um they just uh start doing um right. start working on the on the previous generation console right. and uh and th that console still has a, a a big user base so there is right. no real right. reason um of you know to uh, abandon them. Not an exclusive yeah. right but wait, let me ask you did you think it's more so because of the the inclusion of console gaming now being cl more closer to pc so that there's pc ports so that that that's the reason why the, the, the scalability is such because i am going to push back on one question because a lot of <laughs> things that we we are hearing is that you know as far as the limits to game design because you still have to worry about the lowest common denominator which is the the the, the less powerful system you know so like what mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that do you feel that you know game design will be held back because we still have to cater to these older consoles or you just feel differently that it just game design is different now like where, where do you stand on that specific uh, so, um, to be honest, I'm, I'm sure that we will see uh, some very interesting stuff that will only be possible on the new consoles, right. for sure. Right. Uh, but that's not, I, I don't think that's, uh, you know, that's tied to, it, it's something gradual. Mostly, mm -hmm. it's something that at the start of the generation, even if you have like, titles that are only running on that console, right. you don't have the, you still don't know what are i mean you know the, the, what are the possibilities of that hardware but mm -hmm. there is always someone you know raising the bar with something and then there's another studio kind of uh mm -hmm. you, you know taking that technology and uh improving on that and right. same is for for game design as well mm -hmm. uh, there are so uh, game design specifically i think it's even less uh, tied to uh to this to the hardware than it's uh Ooh, you know the, the actual really? like rendering wow. technology and stuff i mean you, you really like the other that we have right now is they are it's so powerful anyway that you can do mm. almost any anything you can think of in a way or, or another obviously mm, you have to, interesting there are specific limits but it's right. uh it, it's you can still do a lot so gotcha. um what what is in my opinion, what is holding uh, back games is more, you know, the, the stuff that is completely outside of the hardware uh, Which... race. It could be just, uh, you know, uh, market trends and uh, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So where, you know, now the production of the AAA games are mm -hmm. like the, the cost involved is so big that the publisher, obviously, they have to risk less. So they have you always have this, uh, you know, mm. uh, sequel after sequel after sequel mm. of, a, of a game or this kind okay. of stuff. So I think it's, that's really what um, mm. what helps back in innovation more than mm. actually, you know, the actual other limit or something I would like actually that. have to agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been told by a couple of people that when devs start, process you know sometimes stuff is pushed on it because it's hot right now and then when the three years is up that's mm -hmm. not hot anymore mm -hmm. and so it's hard to really innovate and, and make new types of gaming experiences when you clout chase and the, the the stuff that it's like for instance like battle royale everyone mm -hmm. tried to make a battle royale right. game right. for years until this day people are still trying to do mm -hmm. it so you feel just to clarify just, again to clarify what you're saying you you feel a lot of design is kind of held back by market trends you were saying as far as like from like i just want to nail down that mm -hmm. one part, portion of what you said well it is it, it's, it's not held back I, I wouldn't really use that term but it's mm -hmm. at least like uh informed by right. market yeah. trends right okay. and it's a kind of a loop as well because if something is successful mm -hmm. then other will will try to like dive in into uh that market and 
and this is it's it kind of uh, becomes its own thing like a battle royales for mm. example oh yeah it, 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 it started one way but now they are so successful that everyone is doing them in a way or adding uh, that kind of components into right. their games right. and um and and then we need something else that, that breaks this kind of loop you know gotcha. we need an, another game that kind um, of uh, changes things mm -hmm. just, just happy, i think it's it, it's more or less the question is uh, because people feel that the older generations hold back uh, the power or whatever they perceive yeah. it can be, right? Mm -hmm. And being that you're a programmer, being that you have to uh, program for the lowest common denominator and the highest common denominator always being PC, uh, because uh, PCs uh, come out with graphic cards every year that is $800 and above, maybe, um and you know and, and some silicon graphic workstations that you have to uh gear yourself to to work on in your environments because i'm pretty sure the environments that you do use are at least two times more powerful than the dev kits i mean the dev kits that you do use are two times more powerful than actual consumer units uh because you have to have that environment to move around and that flexibility to see what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. uh what i'm talking about is like when you spec you guys spec to like the lowest npc uh, you know what is acceptable for the lowest NPC, and then you uh, also have maximum maximum uh, tools like tensilation and all that stuff push all the way to the limit to see if the game can run in that form. Uh, so the the notion that uh, it's being held back by uh, hardware, you guys scale at all times. Uh, is yeah. is that true? Sure, but that's true for a PC as well. Even right. if you make a game that it's just a PC only, right. you you have to do that kind of uh, uh, thing as well. You have to run on uh, like if you if you see on Steam the 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 average uh, mm -hmm. PC configuration of uh, like a gamer on Steam, it's not that powerful actually. Right. It's not like top end uh, kind of thing. So it's if like a 1060 to... now or something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. It's a, it's a, it's fairly low. Mm -hmm. So you you still have to do that kind of reasoning anyway. Right. Um, right. Now it's just uh, um, easier to do on consoles as well because right. you you can you now have this spark of machines where you can go from 4K uh, mm -hmm. 60 FPS to mm -hmm. down to uh, something that is like more. That resembles more like low mid spec mm -hmm. in on on PC. Gotcha. Right. So, so it's really it, it's kind of the same. Right. And just um, uh, so I don't I don't see this uh, this being like a, a really like a, an issue. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm really su I'm more surprised that people think mm -hmm. that way. I can oh, yeah. see their reasoning. Mm -hmm. I, I can see where they come from. Uh, definitely, it's. Uh, um, but yeah, to to be honest, I. Um, uh, yeah, may maybe we will see some like titles that, um, for example, use the SSD in a very clever way, right. and it's something that's only doable mm -hmm. in a, like with specific tricks and, and stuff. And uh, yeah. um, but probably that is going to be um, my guess is that it's going to be either a, a you know a specific small first party game maybe gotcha. or a yeah. specific technology that. Uh, mm -hmm. That then everyone starts using mm -hmm. um or sometimes innovation comes from uh, mm -hmm. indie games as well mm -hmm. so that there there could be like a specific studio like doing something uh, right. uh really tailored to very to innovative do. and then but maybe okay. then something catches on kind of deal yeah, yeah they yeah. start a trend when it comes yeah. when it comes come from there anyway right because the thing is that's those are the ones that can take the risk like what Seppi was saying is like there's no way a triple a developer is going to take it it's very hard to separate the financial conversation mm. from the design conversation they, mm. they they're not mutually exclusive they have to go hand in hand right so, except when you're talking about maybe at the at the indie level right it, it, it's funny because it made me think about i i keep talking about the outer wilds and king is like i'm not playing that disgusting looking game <laughs> but at the end of the day that game does design things with gameplay that you just haven't seen in other games right, right. now never in a million years are, gonna, are you going to see the new assassin's creed do that it right. just won't do it mm. they were i mean up until minecraft was made no one really was talking about you know creative building games like right. that until that game came out and when that game came out it was so dominant that the big triple a times like yo we got we, we need a piece it. of this pie yeah, like yeah, we yeah, need that's what you said he's alluding to because it's like right. there is financial risk involved 
And right. you know, let's be honest, companies want to make money, right? They want to. Right. Well, you have safe. board members that invest their money into your company, and these mm -hmm. board members need to be satiated. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to balance creativity mm -hmm. and uh, forward thinking and also uh, securing your company. Let, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Splash Damn It has to build a name for themselves. So mm -hmm. it has to be innovative, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it has to be profitable. Mm -hmm. right so you have to it's two crowds that you're trying to please you're trying mm -hmm. to please the fans us mm -hmm. right and you're trying to please the board members them right, right? because so they, they're the, the ones that's going to prove the money crazy. coming down the line to do it again exactly because you have to show mm -hmm. what your product is when you go to a board meeting i'm pretty sure like every three to four months you go into the board meeting and they say well let me see your latest build Right. And how is that latest build when you're doing Q&A sessions? Mm -hmm. How is that latest build uh, from the last build that you did? Mm -hmm. Because when you're asking for more money for investors, mm -hmm. investors have to see the product being uh, produced. Right. And they have to understand that mm -hmm. when uh, the product testing is going up, mm -hmm. they see the trend going forward. So, oh, positivity, mm -hmm. it, it's, it went up 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are willing to invest uh, 20 more million, go forward, continue doing what you're doing type right. of thing opposed to when you go back to the Q&A session and you're going back to the board and it went down 5% and they want to know why it went down 5%. I, yeah. Trust me, I totally get it and I totally mm -hmm. understand. So up to your point. I just think... With, let him answer because yeah, he definitely had that part. Yeah, he had he, that part. Yeah, just have uh, yeah, and the I mean, the AAA industry innovates a lot as well, but it's uh, I think uh, it's it's more of a... Um, you know, it, it it's all about the technology. It's a, about mm -hmm. like finding new cool stuff, mm -hmm. but it's um it's more driven by um uh, by the the, the te technology itself. Well, right. in in indie games, you you the they have to stand out, right? In indie games, have to uh, stand out for something. So there, they they can obviously take more risks as well. So right. for them, it's a win win if you do something unique gotcha. because you you have to stand out from the crowd. Right. So basically to double down on what you said and as far as um you know in it's kinda in line with what what Phil <laughs> Phil Dominus Maximus <laughs> Spencer Sudavira, which is he basically said, Look, every developer is gonna find a line and say that this is the hardware that they're gonna support. But he said, But the diversity of hardware choice in PC has not held back the highest fidelity PC games on the market. He said the highest fidelity PC games rival anything that anybody has seen and ever seen in video games. He said, So the idea that developers don't know how to build games or game engines or ecosystems that work across a set of hardware. There's a proof in point and PC shows that it's not the case. So that's right. kind of the line of thinking, I would say similar to what you, you would say. Would you say that, Giuseppe? And not only, yes, and not only that, it's mm -hmm. uh, developers now are really experienced on, on like actually doing this. Mm -hmm. Back in the days of, uh, you know, the uh, PlayStation 2, 2 and PS1 and so on, it was, I, Every time the other changed, and uh, mm -hmm. there were uh, even fewer engines, like um, a real engine that were so widespread and, and used that supported like all these different platforms as well. Mm -hmm. So now for a developer, it's also it, it's just way easier uh, for us to um, support like console and PC, and uh, mm -hmm. even because we um, the industry has also as um set mm -hmm. into this kind of more standardized um uh, like way of uh, of working so mm -hmm. um yeah in a way consoles are uh, a little bit like uh pc like now, pc it's, it's basically uh, I, yeah, the lines of the i blurred. think yeah. that the only people really saying this and it's not necessarily people people are just hype for new experiences mm -hmm. and i think the only real people that you know stayed against this they, they don't really have any knowledge they just have what past experiences at they right. you know they go to the rises they go to the the kill zones and the, you know gens after gen, gen and they see look this is how things are but it's like you said earlier it's like things aren't the same as they were back then technology's yeah. evolved and you know, and engines like the Unreal engines made it easier to scale everything. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's more of people are just aren't knowledgeable. It's like I'm not a dev. I don't I'm not knowledgeable either. It's right. just more people are not knowledgeable of how these processes are. So that's why they only go off their experiences. Right. They don't go off what actually is in realm of reality. Right. And to, and to, the, to the last question, Shabby, like, do what do you think is the biggest misconception gamers have about? game development that we don't know what the hell we're talking about <laughs> well i i always um 
uh, laugh a little bit of the. Uh, it's it, it happens often that they there are these gamers that are really you know maybe they they, they know a lot of like technical terms and, and stuff like that and they, <laughs> they start getting to this kind of uh, very heated wars be, between like um uh, you know it, obviously often it's like sony versus microsoft yes. whatever my but, icy traffic fit to my ray tracing is better than yours Continue. yeah exactly yeah and they go like <laughs> like for feature by feature they go like oh but xbox has yeah, uh, we got rdna the- 6 Oh, but the SSD drive and the, and so on, and, uh, and they go, like, <laughs> you know, they, it's um, it's it's crazy because it's uh, it's something that uh, not even us developer actually. Really That's what I was about to say. I don't even think about. a lot of developers know what they really can do with these SSDs yet. So break it down. What are we idiots on, Giuseppe? Tell us, school us. What and, don't uh, we know? What I mean, we talking about? I, I mean, sometimes it's just. Um, um yeah a classic one is uh for example when we we talk about uh, game engines right mm-hmm. and you you talk about oh oh this this uh, game is beautiful it uses like the decima engine or mm-hmm. this game has a real engine whatever mm-hmm. but most of the time it's uh like the, these engines can do exactly they use like very similar te- rendering techniques mm. so um, they you know all this stuff like uh you know screen space and amb- ambient occlusion all of this yeah. Sometimes they are they are implemented <laughs> in on in different ways, mm-hmm. uh, but the like the, the the rendering techniques that they use mm-hmm. are very very similar. Very similar. And uh, uh, so sometimes you you can swear like someone goes like, oh yeah, I can see this game. <laughs> you see, you see that, that real uh, engine uh, game because bro. this bug or bro. oh this character looks this way, and it's like maybe I don't know, maybe the. the <laughs> They are from the same artist, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> but Giuseppe, I, mean, it... I could tell the difference between, you know, your face rendered. That, that's unreal. That's not Unity. I, I could tell. I know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, it, it's fun because you, you can really do... Um, I can probably recreate something in a, in a real and in Unity. Mm. And, uh, like, pixel by pixel, they can mm. probably match, like... Uh, perfectly if i really like uh mm-hmm. come into that and i like you know i write the custom shaders and stuff mm-hmm. i can create the same uh, exact face in unity and this mm-hmm. in Unreal, and they will look exactly like the same <laughs> at, at, at per pixel level almost That's um, awesome. That's awesome. but uh, so yeah so but sometimes it was someone that goes like oh yes i this is this <laughs> this game has this specific oh sometimes it's not even related to the mm-hmm. the graphics itself it's mm-hmm. like um it could be like a, even a gameplay mechanics, yes. and they could be like, "Oh yeah, they are using um, a real, so the, the weapons feel like uh, this." One. <laughs> Look at that superior <laughs> gunplay, unreal. <laughs> Come find out, it's Unity. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, man. Look, we could talk to you for hours, brother. This, this is great stuff. Absolutely love these tech deep dives. We got we got to move on. I got to ask you the, the, the question that we ask every run before we wrap up with them, as far as um. I need a Lord Giuseppe's a top five video game or franchises of all time. Any order, any generation. Okay, so, uh, well, my favorite game is, uh, as I said before, it, it's probably Another World. Whoop! We brothers, bro. Oh, we're, we're here. We're okay. brothers. Let's go. That was just, um, yeah, that, that game is just, uh, uh, it's obviously no, no, nostalgia as well, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's on top. Max, uh, and, and then probably. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a, a huge um, uh, mm-hmm. FPS fan as well. Yes. So uh, the first Quake is. Mm. Uh, I was know. gonna ask you that. I was gonna ask you, being that you know you were uh, developing and doing stuff in PC, because mm-hmm. the lines were fairly drawn very early on with us. So we were either Doom or Quake. So my mm-hmm. question to you was gonna be <laughs> Quake or Doom, and because I'm I'm a Quakehead. Right, so <laughs> so that was gonna be my question to you. you know, quite good yeah, I mean, I, I obviously I, I love both of them. I for I'm I'm probably more of a the in the Quake generation of okay. uh, you know, gamers, yeah. even because uh, you know it's the first game I I played in uh, in multiplayer in in LAN with the uh, <laughs> wow uh, yeah like that. So Absolutely. I remember like. Um, 
racking up this uh, giant uh, telephone bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to nobody being able to use the phone while you're seven years of playing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> By connecting like modem to modem with uh, another. <laughs> Yes. With a friend of mine that was, uh, you know, the in another city, so mm -hmm. it was like even uh, like the, mm -hmm. um, the the telephone bill. Bill like, was a much the, much expensive, more international. Yeah, <laughs> so, no. so yeah, that, that was it for, for me. Like uh, yeah, the first Quake and mm -hmm. um, and then the Half Life uh, franchise Ooh. as well. And, oh yes, yeah, Half Life. Half -Life. Half -Life. Half -Life. My, uh, Did you get a chance to play it in VR? Oh yes, I I, okay. I actually uh, like. As soon as they announced it, I pre-ordered like the <laughs> half the like Alex. Like, yeah, we had a big debate on that because we were saying like, uh, does a VR need that uh, that that triple A that that bring them in, right? And for you, it was absolutely no question. Boom! As soon as it happened, like right now, I haven't played it in VR yet, and I definitely want to get it because Sovereign was you know like praising it, mm -hmm. and everybody I hear praises it, and I just saw the new VR Gen Two was uh just released so i'm highly looking into that because it's like six hundred dollars and i'm trying to get into that but yeah so all right yeah i saw your yeah, face I mean, light up yeah it, it works really well on uh even um on oculus quest and uh mm. you know the other I, it, probably the oculus quest right now it's probably the the so best I, VR device mm -hmm. uh, right out there because you can use it on your own it, it's a step on like thing so you can play you know a beat saber or something like that mm. right hooked it up to your PC and you can play um, mm. stuff like uh, Alpha if Alex. So wow. probably that one right now for the, you know, mm -hmm. price point and the, the quality of the, mm -hmm. uh, the unit, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. itself, it's probably the, the best choice to be honest. Oh, okay. So we got All another right. world. We got Quake. And what was it? What was it? That half was? life, half life, half life, right? Yes. So we'll give, give, we need two more. Oh, of course, and then I I have to go for the in the tactics genre. So it's <laughs> definitely uh, the original XCOM series. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Still, so, Gold, Gold of is a hero of mine. So nice. Yeah, the UFO series. XCOM UFO defense. Uh, which one? Just or just the series is, is so, in general. I mean, I mean, uh, for me, actually, the one I play the most is probably the second one, Terror from the Deep. Terror from the Deep. Wow. Okay. Remember that was yeah, salute, that salute. Was That's what's up, man. Yeah. Huge franchise, huge franchise, absolutely. And one, one last one to round out the five, man. Hmm. Let's see. One last. Uh, then I'll go into the Mega Drive, and um, mm. let's see. Yeah, uh, Gunstar Heroes from. <laughs> Yo! Yes. Treasure. <laughs> That's a classic treasure. Two-player shooter. Oh sure. man. Control, control your partner across the screen. Like you could do yeah. so that game was so much. Gun what Star what I loved Heroes. about Gunstar Heroes and Treasure. Treasure single handedly kept the Genesis super relevant when the Nintendo onslaught was in its yeah. swing. Yeah. <laughs> because the Nintendo onslaught was in in full effect. The Super Nintendo, I never forget it. Mm -hmm. And Gunstar Heroes made me go back to that game. That Dan Dynamite Heady, Woo. you know, a, a lot of those games for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guardian Heroes, Sega Saturn. Yes. 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 Bro, yeah. that's a classic Lord Giuseppe Gunstar Hero, man. Salute, brother. And the last one, console. Only one. Any generation. Favorite console of all time. Hmm. No that's pressure. that's tough. That's, that's tough. tough. I I would say obviously the the Mega Drive, mm -hmm. like straight away, because mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, I, especially like the Japanese titles. Mm -hmm. I, uh, it's just the, the output that uh, there the, the the difference in genres and stuff. It's uh, yes. it was crazy. Um, what you going with? Yeah, this? either I I say either that or. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also big into um, mm -hmm. retro computing as well, so mm -hmm. I, I I collect like all, all these micros, especially <laughs> living here in UK. This uh, you know the Britsoft was oh yeah uh, really amazing. Yeah. So you know, the the Spectrum, the wow. uh, you know all, all the BBC micro and okay. so on. Yeah, and one that is really like uh, dear to my heart as well is the Commodore 64. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. All right, now yeah. I gotta make you gun to your head now. Tough choice. That Commodore 64, that Mega Drive. Probably the Mega Drive. Oh, my man! <laughs> Salute! <laughs> Salute! <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> Fantastic, brother, man. That's, that's, it's more like a, it's an actual console, so or, or I see that as a still a it's a, it's a computer, so no it will be cheating to say Commodore 64 as well. <laughs> no, dude, absolute <laughs> fantastic game history. Oh man, just tremendous, tremendous stuff. Now, I, again, I know we we tend to run long. We still have two times, but if you have to go, it's okay. But you just let us know. I'm not kicking you out though. <laughs> like, no, but, I, I suddenly have to go. Yes, yeah, yeah, but what. A real pleasure. And was thank happy. you. Thank you. I appreciate Lord it. Lord Giuseppe, a splash yes. damage. An absolute pleasure to have you in the round. Talk retro. Talk coding. Talk Gears Tactics. Talk how you're going to talk about the sequel. Get rid of the side missions. No, just... <laughs> 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 and, and, and you gave us the release date for the Series X version. You, you gave us all the information. <laughs> Now someone's yeah. gonna snip that one part. I know, right? They're like, what did you talk about? Like, what? He said whole, what? They're gonna look at the whole interview and say he didn't say anything like that. <laughs> Lord Giuseppe, man, an absolute pleasure, man. Hopefully, Splash Damage has some more announcements coming up soon. Where can it find people? Find you? What do you have going on, sir? Well, um, I'm really active on on Twitter, so mm -hmm. that's my go-to social media these days. Mm -hmm. What's the Twitter um, handle? What's the Twitter handle? Let them know. Let the people know. And yeah, uh, bad coffee. Yes. So um, yeah, you can add that to the description, I guess, in, on YouTube or something. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, if you if you just uh, search my name on, on mm -hmm. Twitter, you you would find me. Absolutely. Um, All right. Mm -hmm. Thank anyway, you so much. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for taking some time. You know, you're always welcome back in the room, and we like to see, like I said, the advancement of the studio. We love what you guys are doing, and looking forward to hearing from more for you for the future, brother. Definitely want you back when the Series X one drops. Yes, yeah, I would love, yes, I would love yes, to have you back, yes, yes. if it, especially, especially if you had a role in it too. Because um, console guys, man, we they don't know what they're missing. Gears Tactics is absolutely amazing. The story, the production values, it's truly a, a, a genre, that, a game that translated well to the genre. And um, we can't wait. I can't wait for my, my brothers to get a hold of that game. So you're always welcome back with the, if we we get that eventual announcement of the uh, Series X version. <laughs> Have All a right, good one, bro. Later, just seven. No doubt. So we're gonna go on with the show. Um, let's get this poll. Oh, actually, we got last week's poll results are in, and the people have spoken to the question. With the recent rumors of titles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and now The Medium, all allegedly running at 30 frames per second, will this prevent you per from purchasing said titles? The winner of the three-way ILP poll at 60% of the vote is yes, unacceptable to not include a 60 frames per second performance mode. Coming in at second at 33% was no, a great game can still be 30 frames. And coming in last place at only 6% of the vote was I don't care. The PC Master Race throws 30 frames per second filmic gaming in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to all the lords who participated. Lord Sovereign, what do you feel about this uh, 60 frames per second? Uh, I agree. Just buy them on PC because, you know, for PlayStation, you'll be able to get them on the Epic Game Store soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like shots. shots. Fire. Sounds like shots, man. So bang, go, bang, bang, bang. Let's get this going, man. Obviously, some news going in. Look like a combo topic from both uh, you saw of you and King in reference to the dealings <laughs> of Sony. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, whoever wants to uh, set it up, I don't know if saw of you want to attack the streaming angle, or uh, if uh, if King wants to attack the um epic deal that was made. It was a big deal with Epic Games. <laughs> it wasn't well, a big deal. Listen, all right, let's, let's go to this. I, epic. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Let, let's let's go. This is such a big I mean, deal. It, 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 on the surface, it's not a it's not a big deal because it's not a super amount of money. Even in it's the not back even end, it's not a big deal. On the back end, on the back end, you guys are not. You guys are not paying attention. You're not paying attention. I don't care about Epic. I don't care about Sony. Let's get it. You're not paying attention to the boogeyman in the room. And I didn't get to ask this question. Why don't you tell me who the boogeyman is, man? Why don't you tell me? The boogeyman is 10 Cent. got his hands in everything. Thing. Mm. It's only gonna understand. lose their money. That's no, it. it doesn't matter. Yo, uh, ten, so. go ten cent. The fact that ten cent has their hand mm -hmm. in everything right now. Mm -hmm. So first mm -hmm. of all, that, that, they in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The hand that they have in Epic, right? Forty percent. Right. Not no one point two percent. I feel you. But what matters there? 
Mm. What matters there is the relationship. But, but, that 1.2% got them, got them got them Tim Sweeney salivating over the PS5. Mm. <laughs> like, well, I mean, you, obviously for $250 million, that's a pretty good bribe. So, you Ooh, know, like. That's a, that's, a, that's a drop in the bucket to Tim Sweeney. Mm. Oh, so, boy. no, I, it ain't. Money is I, money. When you at a certain level, you, money. No, 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 no. You just finished saying two fifty is nothing. Just, well, no, 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 no. I mm. told you the deal isn't as big as people are trying to make it out to oh, be. And right. you're trying matters, to tell no, me no, no, that, no, oh, no, 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 that Sony put up two hundred fifty million just to talk. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Let let let's off. Let's off. Get off. The relationship that it creates matters more than the money. Forget about the money. But they had that relationship. No, not on paper. Not, not on, on paper. paper. Okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, so paper. you mean and that's one thing, right? That's one thing, right? You mean they, they, they became week. a junior to 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 the senior? They walked exactly. in the room. They still sons. But it right? doesn't so they matter. Still walk in the room with this guy. They got forty percent. Now, 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 check this out. What that one point something percent? Right. <laughs> we just finished talking about last week how AAA gaming. Right, triple A gaming the way Sony considers it that right. their bag is right. becoming unsustainable. Mm -hmm. Now they put themselves in a position, I don't care how much it is, mm -hmm. they get a cut of everything moving forward. I don't mm -hmm. care how small it is. Mm -hmm. Yo, do you understand that Fortnite made 400 million alone mm -hmm. in April? And April, a mm -hmm. month that this year the world was burning in April, mm -hmm. like they made 400 million. Mm -hmm. It does not to Sony, Sony needs to figure out a way to move forward right with with their narrative while right. still being able to make money that makes sense like you said to yeah. to appease their their stockholders yes. right? right how do you do that you want my opinion wait hold on let, let me frame it and i'm gonna give it to y'all i mean I'm, I'm, i just gotta frame what's off top. so basically it says you know under the deal the investment enables sony and epic to broaden their collaboration with sony's portfolio of entertainment assets and technology and epic mm -hmm. social entertainment platform and digital ecosystem so then it says epic confirmed it will still be able to publish to other platforms as mm -hmm. noted sony is acquiring excuse me 1.4 stake in epic which means the deal values epic at about 17.86 billion now this is the last point i want to shout out venture beat it said yeah, the deal one. is important for sony because it needs Needs allies in the upcoming console war. Later mm -hmm. this year, Sony plans to launch a PS5 in competition with the Series X. But Epic has said that its Unreal Engine 5 and Fortnite will work with all game platforms, as Epic has generally been neutral when it comes to cross-platform tech. If Sony gets any advantage from investing in Epic, it isn't clear yet in this deal. So I just wanted to frame... Well, all I'm that. saying mm -hmm. is not what Solve's saying. Mm -hmm. You know, Solve's just talking about... He's being the... Uh, the um, the side point person. I'm talking about the people on Twitter. They're acting like because they okay. Hold on, let me speak. <laughs> I let you speak. Let Addy get his balls off. Get Addy get his balls off. Come on. Look, the, All right, a right. lot of people are acting like that because they bought the that this this 1.4 percent of the company that they're gonna start randomly having huge amounts of influence <laughs> in what they're talking about. 1.4 percent isn't even let you influence the top of toilet paper they, they got jay -Z seat. they got a <laughs> seat in the arena <laughs> i'm not referring to a solve saying solve is 100 percent right in his point uh -huh. i'm referring to these fanboys on twitter that are literally acting like you know, well first off none of them cared about fortnite for years they can't wait for that horizon zero dawn event so, for I, I don't get that you, you want my honest opinion you want my honest opinion they bought uh -huh. this this, this stock mm -hmm. they probably took whatever lucrative money they had lying around mm -hmm. they 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 invest in an epic because guess what next year they're gonna start launching their stuff in epic mm -hmm. and they're gonna want that stock in epic because it's going to make their their actual store more appealing to a lot more people and they're gonna get more money in the long run because they're yeah. using their own image mm -hmm. to make their image better and they have their own stock in them to get them more money mm -hmm. and then you got to remember too that they lost out on liu because tencent right. Right. Outbid them, right? Yeah, and, and, and Leo literally splash damage. We had Giuseppe on who works with exactly. splash damage. Splash damage is owned by Leo, and Sony yeah. had a bid on that, but then they lost to Tencent. So yeah, that is yeah, Tencent.
uh, has a hand in everything. Let's you know, okay. sovereign. No, you, you're 100 correct, right? Not 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 taking away from your aspect of what how you see it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the Unreal Engine is definitely in a whole different uh, stratosphere. If anybody's looked at uh, Disney, mm -hmm. The Mandalorian, uh, mm -hmm. you understand that the Unreal Engine Four mm -hmm. was actually crafting that world that you saw. Mm -hmm. So if that world to you looked amazing, imagine what the Unreal Engine Five will do. Now, who mm -hmm. owns studios? Sony. Who's uh, lacking in studios? So we would like to. Have have that technology here because we understand mm -hmm. that it's a shift in movie making right yeah. so we, we we put our, our, our hand mm -hmm. in the bag here so our mm -hmm. hand in the bag is here mm -hmm. sony like you said uh jim dance moves ryan is definitely <laughs> looking at uh phil dominus maximus soon to be a really a, a spencer mm -hmm. i like to call it the geppetto pinocchio effect oh, right Lord. uh so He's what, what happens what happens with uh pinocchio Jim Dance Move Ryan, mm -hmm. he's mimicking what Geppetto says. You know, <laughs> Geppetto con controls the strings. You saying Geppetto has his hand up his back? Like <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, now, now you must notice. Now, well, well, Geppetto actually does the marionette stuff. You know what I'm saying? He's pulling the strings. So he pulls he the strings. strings. So he, yeah, he's, he's not, he's not touching other, that little okay. puppet. Let's that puppet don't moves. get touched. Right. So <laughs> when when you're looking at it on the surface, everybody's like, yo, that's a power move. Did you yell out it was a power move when uh, Microsoft brought physics? Oh, Havoc. That, yeah. Havoc. Havoc. Yeah. yeah, and the Havoc engine. When when they actually are in every, every single day, video day. game. Fact. It, Fact. You, you, you're talking about uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Microsoft get a cut. Yeah. Mm. They get oh, a, every every time, every time God of War or something sells, Microsoft get a cut. Mm. All right, so you shout out, shout out to Delala HD, breaking news. W, I guess Ubisoft is going on. Uh, Watchdog Legion will support uh, smart delivery. Right. Thank you, thank fantastic. You, Ubisoft event. So now mm. that you have to look at it in that aspect, Phil speaking Sony... at the uniform, Ubisoft, uh, Erodimus, I need confirmation. Chat Phil Dominus is at Ubisoft. Talk to us, chat, because we're doing a show, so we need y'all to inform us. <laughs> that is that yeah. is kind of big news. It better be yeah, they're true. Talking, they're talking about right now. Probably, talking yeah. about how, okay, 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 continue. Yep, so, Phil just said it. Phil's on stage. Yeah, Continue. He's talking while he's talking. What you have to understand is mm -hmm. Sony must be viable. Mm -hmm. You know, going into this next generation, nobody was yelling out uh, when Microsoft made the deal with Facebook. Yeah. Let's let's keep the same energy. These companies are in the business to make money, Fact. right? So 1.2 uh, percent to 250 million is a Jay Z seat in the Nets, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's like, "Yo, Jay Z on the Nets." No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He sat there and had a seat in the arena, and he was not looking at the bosses that was up there. Mm -hmm. Looking down, so Tencent is up there, right. looking down at Jay Z sitting down with Sony in the arena. You, you and Beyonce watch the game. <laughs> you watch the game. God. Now, I don't believe that that well. Probably next year when Tencent actually tries to purchase Epic, right? If that actually happens, and then you know that Sony deal is definitely off the tables. Then you know they get the cut, they get their money. Mm -hmm. Somebody posted. Uh, seventeen point two billion. Mm. Oh, at, at two fifty, made seventeen point two billion. This is worth. No, <laughs> no. Listen, you sideshow stockholders. <laughs> <laughs> Who said the two hundred fifty million investment I'm turned into seventeen point two billion? I don't want to burn them into the streets. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you look at my timeline, you'll understand that people take false information and want to go loose with it. Mm -hmm. okay, they're worth 17 point something billion, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in that, they have a stake in that, and what happens when they make more money, their shares grow. So whatever shares that they did get from that two point, mm -hmm. um, uh, 250 million, we don't know, right? right? But do we know how much money they gave Microsoft to use the Azure service? Oh, yeah, no. that's another thing. Azure, it, Azure, Azure. Is there, yeah. We don't know this, right? Mm -hmm. You have to stop picking and choosing who you lord, what deals you lord, and what deals you feel is beneficial mm -hmm. when the company is trying to survive and trying to move forward in the ever-changing world. Mm -hmm. This is a great deal for them, right? Mm -hmm. Epic right now has the number one engine going forward for this generation. They had mm -hmm. it the last generation, and they beat out a lot of other engines. Unless you have a custom engine, mm -hmm. you're even in the same playing field mm -hmm. they're so good that they give it to you for free and mm -hmm. send after you make one million sell one million copies then mm -hmm. we come collect <laughs> so, i don't know who works like that but he <laughs> is definitely so confident in mm -hmm. their uh, engines that they can do that so sony needed to do this this yeah. is something that 
definitely works in favor of them. Does that give them uh, Gears of War? Do you think Gears is coming? No. So, so, so stop thinking that it's game related as far as you're going to get a game mm -hmm. produced solely by Epic, Sony, or Sony. That's not how the deal works. The deal works is they got a seat at the table. They get some money off of deals that are being made. Right. Stop only stop with the fraud with yeah, the and, and, and then the thing is I, when it comes it was it was a, it wasn't a playstation acquisition it was a mm -hmm. sony acquisition right. it, 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 but so the thing about yeah. it is like they, they, it's like king said like when you talk about where epic wants to go mm -hmm. epic wants its hand in all kinds of media mm -hmm. not that's just the same with tencent right, right. Mm -hmm. so it, it is that thing where it's looking at the bigger picture gaming is a part of it right and obviously when you talk about epic you immediately think epic game store you take tim sweeney you think right. about Unreal engine so that that is definitely something and, and like king said like they'll be they'll get a little piece of that pie mm -hmm. and that's what they need again to sustain their narrative moving forward mm -hmm. you know they're not going to turn around and say, yeah, you know, you know, guys, you're right. Like AAA development is, is off the chain. We can't sustain it. They're never going to tell you that. Right. right. They're never going to say that. They're going to figure out ways to bring in more revenue. Right. While continuing to just say, no, this is our path forward. We can do this. Right. Um, so this is just a way of them to keep continue bringing money in from the sidelines right. and keep moving forward with what, you know, people expect from PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to put down in the chat because I, you you're one of the biggest cappers. Beef in the chat. <laughs> I want you to tell me what benefit does Sony Game Division get from having a 1.2 percent <laughs> stake inside Epic Games? I, I really, I really want to know your perspective because, and this will encapsulate the fanboy mentality that is permeating the Twitter <laughs> universe right now. Because I want to know what you think is going to happen with what they invested, and I want to shoot it down. <laughs> Put it in the chat. I mean, uh, the, 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 the real facts about it is, is that, like I said, the relationship it creates that relationship where you guys are already in bed together, right? You right. may not be fully in bed together. He said. You know? He said. No, hold, he, he said, trust me, Sony making moves. Well, Epic, Sony, Epic already made a demo Sony to impress Sony. Sony. Right? Sony making moves to put their games on Epic Games. <laughs> <laughs> he said, so, there it is. He said, there it is, King. He got you. <laughs> he, he said, they making moves and didn't say anything. <laughs> man, shut up. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he can't believe fair boy. Oh, wait, hold on. There's other daddy ruins. Stop it, King. Shaking my head. They know the intricacies of the, of the deal. Please. Yo, yo, Danny, stop trying to be Chris. Let, 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 let Chris be Chris. Let Chris be Chris. Let, let Chris be Chris. You be Danny and let Chris be Chris. <laughs> he said Epic was trying to get Sony's attention. That's what he said. Epic That's... was trying to get... <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. Said Epic was trying to get the little man's... <laughs> Wait a second, wait a second. That's like a fly swinging past my window while I'm driving 100 miles an hour. Do you, you really think that Epic was trying to get... You think Sony's big dog? <laughs> Look, I, I'm glad that y'all saw this. I'm glad that y'all see it. He thinks that Epic needs to get Sony... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> look, man, we gonna have some fun with this. Let me jump and get my balls off before we move on, man. What's the late great prodigy song? There's a war going on outside. outside Nowhere to say from. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide forever. forever. <laughs> Listen, man, you need allies, man. Survival of the fittest, kids. <laughs> They need allies. Look, at the end of the day, I, I'm not mad, man. Look, do your little investment. You know what I'm saying? Um, a relationship, you know, as far as the, you know, the engine, whatever. Obviously, so I know it's only 1.4, you know, people going to go on that. But I think it, this is where I look at it. I look at it like, and shout out to hip hop, because hip hop came for me on Twitter, y'all. I mean, <laughs> talked about this. So I thought it was interesting, you know what I'm saying, that, um, you know, we saw the Spider-Man uh, Miles Morales box for PlayStation 5. And mm -hmm. you know they got the white cover. I do not like the white cover. I'm, just yeah, that. I'm, not, not, I'm not feeling the white. But um, you know what I'm saying? Like what I do remember is, you know, at the top, I'm used to only oh on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. So I went, dug in the crates. I said, let me look at the Spider-Man box, the original joint, PS4, put it up, put an image, and put the other image of the PS5 Miles Browns without it. And I just put this face. Or I think I put eyeballs, like, wow, only on PlayStation. Where, you know, kind of like alluding, like, where's that at? 
So the Sony fan base, they was coming for the kids, so they was coming. <laughs> nah! <laughs> Listen, man, they already said they're not doing that no more. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's PlayStation Studios. I said, yeah, I, I get that. that. That's true. They said that the little box now, PlayStation Studios. But here's the thing. A little European v v v Vice President Saul has mm -hmm. said, yes, we will show this logo also on other platforms that we intend this to be at. <laughs> So when he said other platforms, oh, I go, oh, you oh. basically telling us what's, what's ha about to happen. So again, this is how <laughs> y'all might get the ultimate no go. Listen, Rise of Zero Dawn on a series because he specifically was like, yo, you know, right now they didn't get a chance to put the new logo on um last of us 2 and what you call it um go shima in time but it's like moving forward when you see this playstation store studios logo that mm. this insinuates the type of quality and it will be on other platforms also so when mm. i hear that the writing on the wall as far as games going on a pc to me so i just tell people look we got to start bracing ourselves now as far as this exclusive talk there's a lot of talk about exclusive this and exclusive that mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so Y'all doing it too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People want to make money. That's just like at the end of the day. So when I look at this move, this also what I think. We're talking about the good stuff. <laughs> like I should have said. That. What I think is this. Let's be real. It's smart business sense, right? We know Steam is the number one thing out there, but it's smart business sense to say, low, let's get a relationship. We already got a relationship with Epic on this mm -hmm. uh, this engine you know what i'm saying i think what it is is is, is epic mm -hmm. was probably willing to you know promote their stuff on yeah. fortnite and stuff like that they yeah. uh, they're the underdog and i think playstation like low-key feels like they can low-key manipulate right. them because well, they because they're because their brand is so it's so more. quality yeah. that they feel like they can hold get on, a hold on let me get at danny epic. rose right quick get at me see now nah, that's goalpost moving my brother i can't I, that's cap danny you said get at me when it's dead y'all said your things that gets me mad about sony fan base and i love y'all uh, let, is that, let, hold let me, this, let me get this one mil, dude. Look, mil, I'm gonna get my boss off. Hold up, mil is being I'm disrespectful. Will, Just give me five let me, seconds. Let me get Danny. I'm in the middle of talking to Danny. <laughs> then you can get him. All I'm saying is, every, the thing that y'all gotta say, realize, is to be honest in reference to. At first, people were saying it would never happen, right? Then it went from it's never happening to okay, well, that's a three year old game with Horizon Zero Dawn, right? Hmm. Now we don't see only on PlayStation. Now, talk to me when it's day and day. You can't keep moving the goalposts. You see what I'm saying? Let's just be real. It's happening. So stop capping and just accept it. That's why it's no big deal. But what it is is people put themselves, box themselves into these pockets like, yo, we ain't never going to do what they do. Dogs, it's about money. That's what this is. So let's just get out the feelings. Now you can get your man. Go get your man, whoever you try to get. It's yeah. Assassin's Creed of uh, Unhallowed coming out November 17th. Mm -hmm. um, look, Two days before mm -hmm. Cyber. I accidentally uh, mm -hmm. accepted that. Look, I, I get it. You guys joke around in there, but yeah. start, don't call people corporate slaves and stuff. Yeah. When you say it in color, then I can see you. Mm -hmm. Because when you're, when you're doing it in the bushes, I don't see you in the bushes. The mm -hmm. only person I'm going to look in the bushes for most of the time is definitely going to be Christopher Hart. You know why? Because Christopher Hart... No, that's who he was attacking, was Christopher yeah, well, Hart. Mm -hmm. Listen, Christopher Hart comes in here week after week. Right. Week after week. Maybe sometimes the only Literally the, voice, right? Yeah. And he takes it and he gives it and he's highly respectful until people get disrespectful with him. Right. Just don't be disrespectful with him. Yeah. And I cap for Christopher Hart more than he's his so-called generals. I <laughs> You need the flip side, buddy. <laughs> so no, that's it. I mean, I did, all that corporate slave stuff, though, man. I don't care about that. At the end of the day, like I said, we just got to be honest. Okay. I'll gotta, show you a real sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we got to we gotta get our feelings. This is the way things are going. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay. It ain't no big deal. Like, it's, it's, it's no deal. So that's how I look at well, it. Well, I still have, I still see people on Twitter saying that it's just Horizon. Listen, and, and you know what's I've funny is like good authority that something's happening. Oh, August. everything coming. Yeah, I, I got is, it from great authority that something's happening. And what, what's funny is mm -hmm. remember back in the day I, I, when Hulk was on here, yeah. we were talking about Death Stranding. I said, look, they mm -hmm. let the the Quadic Dreams IPs come over. Yes. They have to do that. Yeah, that, and then they're that, like, Detroit oh, became human went over there. And they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know about that. I was like, they own the Death Stranding IP. They yeah. didn't have to do that. Exactly. Like, it's it's about making money. So uh, the last thing, last point with this is just that. I think this opens up a relationship potentially with Epic Store as well, right? For getting those games, even if they don't come day and date, right? 
to getting those games over there at some point because again that's a whole marketplace that's a whole base we've just seen when horizon zero dawn was over there on steam and start to move right it was up there you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. with sea of thieves like people they're in the business of making money they may not do it day and day initially but they this is where it is all right so that's all i want to say that yeah. i didn't get your balls off and then we good you finished everybody good yeah, I, 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 I'm finished, but let, let me go ahead and stay because uh, I see people in the in the mm-hmm. chat complaining. Look, like mm-hmm. it is okay to joke around with each other, mm-hmm. but if I feel like it's disrespectful, Facts. I will shut it down. Shut it. <laughs> shut it down. Shut it down. He heard that from somebody that was an authority over him. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> Get your ass out of the aisle. <laughs> how you know? I, I, no, how no, you know? Get you know, down. Oh, they just announced Far Cry Six. <laughs> oh, nice. That's what's up. Yeah, we, we put it, it was all Lords of Gaming down there. Shout out to uh, Hector Ramirez again, putting it out there. I got my man from Breaking Bad, Gus, as the as the judge. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, salute. But look, we, we'll move on. I saw it. You want to get your balls off? Yeah, before. yeah. I mean, it, look, that relationship is only going to grow. You have to understand also that mm-hmm. Sony is still they're going to grow these relationships, right? But at the same time. They're never they're never going to directly mm-hmm. it, it, two things, right? Sony is not a direct competitor. If, if you if you think about how often Tim Sweeney attacked Microsoft and UWP and right. Microsoft Store, it's because they were going to be a direct competitor to the Epic Game Store, which we didn't know about at that time, at right? Time. right? At the time, Sony doesn't have those aspirations. Right. Those are the guys you're going to get in bed with, right? right? Because you can supplement them without now, do you. Do you uh-huh. feel like this relationship they're building will eventually make? Because like right now, Horizon's coming on Steam. Mm-hmm. Do you think that this type of relationship they're having will eventually make it to where their games are exclusively on Epic Game Store? I don't. I don't know how that that works at all because Steam, they Steam is some... too big to ignore, man. Yeah. I mean, they well, could be like, I, like, like, and to, you know what? What kind of kills me? I was thinking this morning, mm. like, they are, isn't Steam doing some type of um, rule where you can. If you have, if your console, if your game's not on their con, their their mm-hmm. platform, you have thirty days, or you're just not going on that platform at all. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's low key, like, like that's messed up, and like I don't feel like no one even bringing that up. But you know, that's mm-hmm. besides the point. Like, do you feel like that rule mm-hmm. will prevent them, or do you think that they'll get such a good relationship because they're having, you know, because they're buying stock, you know, they're they're mm-hmm. talking with each other, they're helping them with the the Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. I I low key think it will start to go don't be surprised if after a couple of titles it's all on epic like it, I, i'm really thinking that i like, see this on the exclusivity window yeah um, a window that's you can't it. have a window anymore because steam shut that down yeah um well, you, ha- you, you have 30 days to get your stuff on their <laughs> platform or they ain't let you in the club they let you in the club Yep. Oh no, man! Look, you can't that's piss off Steam. Man. Steam is out here moving. They got yeah, and that's, that's another thing. You can't really like Steam is. Uh, th- th- no matter who you are, right. it's tough. These these guys have spent more than a decade, decade. building. I, I, I get that, but at the same time, you know there was there's you know you put State of Decay on on, on not on Steam. You know right. people will be upset, but it's State of Decay. It's a good game. It's not great. Right. But you put God of War oh, only no, on fast, Epic fast, Store. I mean, Epic, people Epic, gonna we, put their tail right between their legs we, and we, walk straight we, back we will, to that club. I will like, give you this, Addict. We know Epic is known to back the truck up for an exclusive yeah. and piss people off. Mm-hmm. So it's possible. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, again, we I gotta see how this six relationship. Months, you'll start seeing stuff if, on their exclusive. If, if any deals, right? Because mm-hmm. let's be honest, uh, Sony doesn't have a, a place in the PC market, mm-hmm. right? So in order to make that foothold, Epic is gaining ground. Mm-hmm. Get in bed with them now. Yeah. Um, put your stuff. And I, I, I say day and date. I really don't care mm-hmm. um, because it doesn't affect me at all. And it should never affect any gamer. Oh, say that, game. King. They get mad. Well, then let them blow up. Um, <laughs> because they get mad at me with this. You because you should never be pocket watching individuals to that nature mm-hmm. that you're worrying about where they're purchasing a game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna always shame you guys. I'm gonna okay. keep shaming you guys because only four million dudes is valid. The rest of you dudes are four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. this four million boys here. <laughs> and I honestly feel and I hope uh mm-hmm. dance moves Ryan, you don't like the name, fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope you're watching mm-hmm. because if you were to put uh Last of Us 2, mm-hmm. day and date on PC, the same way you put it in on the PlayStation, those, that 4 million 
would have been something like 20 here, 50 million something of a weird unheard of uh, number mm -hmm. and you have to stop locking yourself behind these old archaic uh views and thoughts because it's not beneficial for your longevity you're in the business to make money and not coddle these babies mm -hmm. let these babies cry they're gonna still be oh. spending their money while they cry yo Jesus. yo yo let, let, let me interrupt you for one second mm -hmm. Kate. christopher hart i don't usually read non super chat but we're gonna read this <laughs> ah, what? christopher hart i do not care what people purchase a game or where people purchase a game. that's what he mm -hmm. said i just know the best the best experience for the PlayStation games is on the PlayStation console. I'm willing to bet you, I'm willing that to bet you 20 bucks that if I went back in your history, I will find some form of fashion says, I don't need an Xbox, I have a PC. I'm willing to bet you I can find this, Christopher. I'm not going to look. That's but I'm that, willing to bet you that's out there somewhere. That's categorically incorrect. Like, <laughs> when Horizon Zero Dawn releases on the PC, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, be the better best version. Place to it play. Really it's just, it's just Look like at Christopher. How are you going to act like he, like he never said something like that? I'm willing to bet you. Yeah. If I went through these top chats, don't make me Christopher Hart. Just admit it. You be, you, you. You're being a fraud right now, Christopher. Hart. Let's get some fraud alerts in that <laughs> chat for our old boy, Christopher Hart. <laughs> look, man, at the end of the day, he can choose to, to play where he wants to play. I really don't care about that. But um, look, like I said, we, we, we're definitely seeing them expanding into you know PC, and, and hopefully, like I said, we'll see what happens with the Epic Store. Very interesting. Let's get the last topic. We got to move. Um, um, let's, let's get these super chats real quick. Get we the got, super uh, chats, sir. Mariano Bumpa with the five dollars super chat. Can't wait to play all these Sony first party sixty frames per second on PC. <laughs> Good job, Sony. <laughs> Hashtag who did Why that? Why is there mad you? fraud alerts in the chat? For okay. <laughs> wow! You gotta get that fraud alert in there for you. Keep putting them in there, man. Keep putting them in there. I, I, I want. I want to see that red. I want to see load. that red. He just passionate. Continue. Then, then we have Emmanuel with the two dollars super chat. They busy hating on Xbox while Sony is busy copying. <laughs> yeah, savage. <laughs> hey, man. Whatever makes you that. I'm not even mad at the copy no more. Like. It you got to make money. You have to make yeah. money, and it just the wall garden stuff. Listen, I when we were younger, we loved it too. Like, oh my god, you have this game. Oh, but we don't have that game. I get it. Mm. It becomes a dumb argument when you're a forty year old man arguing about this. Like, no, like I just don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Like, just buy everything. <laughs> you have everything. You do not trying to shell out them. Them pockets is weak. <laughs> Savage. Your pockets need to do push-ups. Oh, anyway, look, let's get the last joint going and we'll get about it here. Lord Attic, man. Um, Xbox and WB sitting in the tree. K I S S. Some IMGs, what we doing? Here. Hey, big head. Hey, All big right. head. What's hey, going hey. on, man? This, what, what, what? Man, we uh, first off, you know, obviously everything we're about to spew is pure speculation. Speculation. Uh, you know, they, there's a good chance that this never happens, mm -hmm. but there's always a chance that it does. I would say the chance is like ten percent, but. So let's get on to it. <laughs> Warner Brothers announced a couple weeks ago that mm -hmm. they were in the option to sell. at and is clearly mm -hmm. uh, so much in debt. They they want to appeal, like the last minute appealing some of their investors. Mm -hmm. So what I want to bring to the round table is mm -hmm. at the time we didn't, Microsoft wasn't interested. It happened mm -hmm. weeks ago. You got, I think we even talked about it. Right. So, but now it looks like Microsoft is actually interested in their open negotiations along with Activision, 2K, and EA. Uh, mm. Keep in mind that Warner Brothers mm. Games, WB Games, they own stuff like uh, they own the, the Mortal Kombat franchise. They own the studio that makes Mortal Kombat. Uh, they own the IP, but not the license to stuff like Shadow of Mordor mm -hmm. uh, and the Batman stuff. They don't own the, the, you know, the content that's in these games, but they own the IPs. Mm -hmm. Uh, they would have to renegotiate the license if they did purchase these studios to get the access to make more Batman games and Shadow of War. I don't think Shadow of War, Mordor or anything like that. I don't think that would be in that context. Mm -hmm. But what I want to bring is like, is this something that Microsoft needs? Yes. Do you think this is something? Because I personally, me, feel like this is the perfect fit. Yep. Uh, obviously, I don't know because it's a lot of money. Four billion dollars is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Especially for uh, do would I blame them for not build paying four billion dollars? That it's doesn't two, include two, licensing. It, it's two two four billion. So it's it's anywhere from that number two two four mm -hmm. billion. So I personally feel like there's there's a lot of scenarios. First off, they need another studio that makes those third party get person games that Cognito so loves. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rocksteady's 
Attic, what you need to do is plug your video up, honestly, because if anybody doesn't understand his views on this, he has a video up right now that's elaborating on these exact views. So you're going to get a brief synopsis of it, but he has a full video up on the Attic yeah. channel. Oh, and oh, please okay. definitely check out that video because I watched it and he made me think completely different with a couple of topics. And it's like, you know, when it comes to, they, they need someone to make Killer Instinct. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I honestly think the reason they don't make it is because they don't have a full-time, uh, you know, studio that just makes head dead fighters. If they bought NetherRealm, I think the first thing Microsoft would do was approve a budget to make a Killer Instinct mm -hmm. versus uh, Mortal Kombat. That'd be crazy. And I think that would show people like, yo, we own this this stuff now. We and own. that's the thing. Like, if they buy them, I think the one IP that does come over is is Mortal Kombat, right? That's the one that you, I think you get with the. Studio. I don't think anything becomes exclusive. Mm -hmm. No, I that, I completely agree. I think if they get them. You say Batman's coming to every platform. You say whatever uh, WB Montreal is making is coming to every platform. I think platform. that if that happened, I think Batman would go to multiple platforms. I don't think Mortal Kombat would, though. I think, they, I, I, think, well, I, I, I think that studio would be making Killer Instincts and Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. see Killer Instinct going over without Mortal Kombat going over. Right. I, I, I hear what you're saying and, and definitely understand exactly what Sovereign was going to allude to, that everything will be in Game Pass, but you guys got to pay. <laughs> oh, no. Right. I, 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 you I, I, make I, it more appealing on the Xbox platform, platform, platform with Game Pass, right? See, to me, if I, if, if I had it the way I would appreciate it to go, obviously, I'm just, you know, one person. I don't have no, uh, no marketing background, no business background, but I feel like they have a lot of little studios that make Lego stuff. Let that go third party because oh yeah, yeah, that stuff they you know quote unquote I don't agree with the term but Game Pass filler it might appeal to some people it's not going to build everyone but if you have all those studios making all those sooner or later you're going to appeal to everybody. Well, my my view on it is this: it's fifteen studios, right? So and it was kind of weird because somebody had DM me a minute ago about you know Microsoft acquiring uh, like a boatload of studios, and I was like, man, eh, I know about two. I don't know what the hell are you talking about. But again, and then I get weird DMs like told you so. Um, but when, in seeing this now, I understand how it would be bracketed off, and it will be in tears. You have the let's say the lower half. And, and I'm not I'm not disrespecting any developer because I don't make games. I'm not. We can only even remotely, popular, right? Well, we well what I'm going to say is like, let's say the popular uh, developers, right? Let's say you take the lower end, you have those uh, make, it's, it's 15, we're going to break them up in sets of five. Uh, they will have a turnaround on uh, one or two year old games, right? So they make games to, to keep generating content inside Game Pass, right? So those games could be episodic, could be whatever those games inside game pass then well all of them will go to game pass but then you have the next tier game uh studios which would be uh anywhere from uh two to three years or two to four years uh games those games will be the mid double a games and those games will make it to game pass and then you will have the last set of uh, developers which will be uh the, you know uh anywhere from um you know, four to six years in development type of games or AAA Sony type titles or, uh, you know, high caliber Microsoft type titles that take those five years, those four to five years to develop and don't um, uh, do doesn't have to have that pressure on them. So they're able to cultivate and do what I, they do. And the other ones in the middle is able to do what they do in a time frame. And uh, the last teams is able to do what they do in a time frame with also keeping in line with the nine studios that you do have. So there's constant levels of uh, creation being done inside Game Pass and a level of diversity from every studio contributing will uh, take Game Pass to a whole different Netflix type of level. That's my opinion of it, and I think that's the benefit. But the biggest question is, does Satya and Phil, because the one can't move without the other. They have to move together, right? Can they convince the bigger company, Microsoft, that they can take the Xbox brand and put it on equal footing in the Microsoft equals ecosystem as far as peer to peer can can they convince them that this four billion this two to four billion acquisition of these studios the wb would put them in a position because they're a software company 
that they can actually look Microsoft, the parent company, eye to eye in gener generating revenue through Game Pass, X Cloud, and Microsoft services, Xbox services. Can that stand? And if they can convince them that, then I think that purchase and that acquisition happens. Mm -hmm. Without that convincing, I do not think that acquisition happens. I think the only way Microsoft usually don't spend billions unless they can make more revenue than just uh, than just gaming. Yes. Um, Mortal Kombat, I think, is one of the things that they can make with just gaming because obviously there's movies, TV shows, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know if that's enough to validate if they have to spend four billion dollars. I know. Now, I now to, invest to, into, to invest into the ecosystem with Game Pass, maybe they're willing to to take that kind of risk because that's a lot of studios that they bought Warner Brothers. I don't think Microsoft has to buy anything else when it comes to studios. Yeah, I think they're done. Yeah. I think they they'll get to because to me I personally would like them to you know if they all were multi plat that would you know that would be a little bit more disappointing but we can't act like you know if they're able to get these licenses go Batman Batman's being game uh, day in one Game Pass wouldn't be relevant because it would uh, you know not to mention the people that make Shadow of uh, uh, Mordor they're a talented studio and they got the nemesis in. Right. Mm -hmm. Hold so on, I'm I, so sorry. I was, I'm having a, 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 a beef in the chat. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, 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 no, I, I was, I was I I'm like so. completely not listening. Me and Lamarcus is going at it. I, I, I just want his knees. He's saying then that, get his knees into in private your tax. All right, but can I can I do the vet? I can I, I just want the box and knees chat because he's saying that Horizon Two West would never go on PC during the life cycle oh, of the PlayStation this Five, fun, and I wouldn't so. know if he gonna yeah. put his knees who, to that. Who's saying this? Who's saying this? Le Marcus, he coming for me. I got, I got to get him. Nah, Marcus, don't make that bad. Can we get just me? Can we put this official on? What is this? IOP one one sixty six. Can can we do this, Lamar? Because you talking you strong. I just want knees. You don't want a granular here. <laughs> you you gotta be the first one to come out. He said, he said, Horizon ain't coming until PS six or let, PC. Let, 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 let me talk. Oh my god. Talk to you for a couple seconds, Lamar. <laughs> you could be the first person. Him get Cognito's knees. That's not. That's what, I'll panel. put my knees on to the fans. Panel. How would you feel, Lamar, to be the first person to get his Bet. knees? Horizon Zero Two no. won't. But no, he said he said it. Horizon Zero Two won't be on PC till PC, PS6. We got it. Okay. Yo, yo. Lamar, you Add just it. officially gave him your knees. So thank you, thank it. you, brother. Thank you, brother. Add thank it. you. We remember the document one sixty six. And if I lose, I put my knees on camera. If you lose, you gonna have to figure out the. We, I gotta figure out how I need to. You know, we gotta, gotta, super, gonna chat the knees. gotta super chat the knees. Yeah, you gotta super chat. You gotta see yeah, You gotta super chat your knees. Add if it. you when you lost. <laughs> when you Add it. Look yeah. at my screen. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Mario, oh, get closer. No, no. Is, Salute oh, to my oh. man Lamarcus for putting that better. If you're doing that, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> three, I'm going to get off your screen. All right, let's, let's, get the super chat. let's get the super chat, y'all. Yeah, let's my do man. that. Yeah, we got, uh, restored Hades with this $2 super chat. Ubisoft show was good. Far Cry 6, Book of X. <laughs> yes. Then we have the Eagle with the $5 super chat. Got to disagree with you on the last one, Cog. Delusional ins <laughs> insinuations does not exactly equal passion. passion. He's talking about Christopher Hart. He's talking about Christopher <laughs> JD Gamer. Mm -hmm. If the negotiations include a 10-year exclusive license period, Phil Dominus Maximus, soon to be Aurelius, with uh, WB gets a crossover fighting game exclusive, Killer Instinct versus Mortal Kombat, high quality devs and more. No doubt, no doubt. Then we get the we yeah, got the medic. Super chat from Restored Hades. Mm -hmm. Seems like so many people won't lock down that path that they uh, would make it all exclusive. At the end of the day, Xbox needs to compete against Spider Man. They would be buying. Uh, they would playing. Uh, I completely. They would be playing, they by, would be PlayStation playing by PlayStation rules. Okay, not necessarily because I don't think they would keep that to themselves. I, I think to to me personally, I do feel like if they bought WB and they were able to maintain the, uh, even if they couldn't maintain the Batman license, these people are excellent at making these type of games. Just mm -hmm. go to Marvel and le at least one of them people. Mm -hmm. I do think it would be exclusive. I do. Game, I think that particular game would be exclusive because Microsoft is being very petty right now, and they and they <laughs> do it just to be petty. For Spider-Man. What else we got? Super chat. We got a five dollar super chat from Ron Mayhem. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh look, we'll keep Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct and Sony can keep uh can keep Street Fighter and take Tekken back. 
No. <laughs> nah, I don't give him Tekken. No, 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 no. I fought Force very Street hard Fighter. to get Tekken yeah, to yeah. stay on uh, Xbox. That and Soul Calibur. Shout out to Soul Calibur and Game Pass right now. Game Pass! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Definitely, definitely. Did we that. get the, the Medic? Final we got the Medic final as we chat. If Microsoft picks up the WB Studios, big if the IP licenses aren't necessary, aren't necessary. Rocksteady, Monolith, WB Montreal have a chance to build new IP, which is true. Finally, is true. they, won't, is they true. won't be held down by having to make these IP, but mm -hmm. these IP sell. Wow, we got a five dollar super chat. Victor Allistine, uh, no, you missed. I missed yeah. one, yeah. Uh, Mariano Pompa with the two dollar super chat. Take them knees, Kyle. I'm trying. Yeah, we got it. We got to bet. Me and Lamarcus, we in the mix, son. So that's what's yeah. up. We have, yeah, you got jumped big time, my addict. Then we have Squirrely Dan with the two dollars super chat. Can't give knees when you when you a snake, my guy. Wow. <laughs> Who said that? Wow. Come on, don't don't do that. Don't right. do that. Oh, <laughs> Squirrely. Oh, wow. From Deep Attic, Microsoft would also would need a, a Warner Brothers studio size purchase of Japanese developers that would could be done. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. They definitely need a Japanese developer. And mm -hmm. when, we keep, when we say they're, they, they might be buying these, it's a huge if. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a lot of money. Well, but we got to find out the Super Chat from Victor Allistine. This is a rare opportunity that a company like Tencent could oh, take if, might, if Xbox <laughs> decides not to. Mm -hmm. Rockstar is better than all the Xbox studios. And, and and worth shout it. out to Jez Corden because he said it. He was like, dude, you just just to block them from mm -hmm. buying everything you have to consider that is that is yeah, a good that's point. a good point Especially that's a good point it tends and buys them and yeah. then that'd be that'd awesome. be the, and it's like you just send it and be awesome. buy them because awesome. amazon needs that stuff too that'd be gotta, awesome because y'all didn't see it <laughs> that'd be awesome because y'all didn't see everybody out here they sideshow doctors the, 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 the stock market and analysis and that'd be so epic to see just people just go quiet on twitter get the super chat we, we got joke you got the medic we got no nah, you had uh squirrely dan we got Squirrely Dan. Cog is going to collect uh, that spot. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, wow. yeah LaMarcus and me. Go ahead and head. JD gave it with the $2 dollars we chat. Uh, I need Microsoft to get WB, a Japanese dev, and a Sobo. Yes, I'm with that. Mm, Sobo. Yeah, that a Sobo might Sobo. happen. What's up? What's up? What and else? then we have Jonathan B with the five dollars super chat. Use this five dollars for the shipping label for Lamarcus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so put the boxes in the chat. I'm coming. I'm coming. He said it's not happening. Do the PlayStation Five. Like, don't let yo. Don't let that Horizon West news come up on my feed. You just you, you have the precedent already. You got the precedent. They, 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 this is this is an example, so of non-acceptance. This is this is why I got my new thing is I'm not arguing with you on Twitter. Put your knees up in here, and we go bet <laughs> what's time it is. Cause y'all keep acting like this. Not this is the new reality. I can't wait. And this is not about me wanting all this to happen. This is just where it's going. Just It'll open be crazy your eyes when the PlayStation Five come out. Miles is dating D. <laughs> <laughs> like, fam, are we really this okay? But look, I put my knees up. I lose, I lose. I put it out there. You know what I mean. <laughs> Halo will be on PlayStation. Yo, Lamarcus was going down with the shit, bro. He going well, in. I, well, I if Halo's it. on PlayStation, you already know where God of War could be played best at. Anyway. <laughs> Look, I give my balls I off. Break your heart. I give my balls off real quick, man. Look, you know when this news came across, you know I was like, wow, this this is this is crazy. You know what I'm saying with the WB jerk, but I'll be real king. Like, how many times we done heard these super mega? Like, we know Microsoft got the bread to do all this stuff. But to me, it's just the reality of of it happening. And I, I just want to be that guy. Kyle, like, I, I want you to think ahead. about it this way, right? Yeah. Because this is the same conversation that I was hearing when it was Disney trying to acquire Fox. Right. And it was a lot of hurdles and stuff that dudes yeah. had to do. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And it, at one time it went through, then it didn't go right. through. Mm -hmm. It was left. It was right. But the, do it by a process of elimination. Um, Rockstar, no. Right? Because Yay. Rockstar... EA, EA isn't Activision. as no, EA, EA would want, I wouldn't be more concerned with Activision mm -hmm. than EA, right? EA would want, but Activision can acquire, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about, and, and I always say it, it's always about those two individuals. Mm -hmm. If they can convince the parent company, because remember, I, I don't know how big Satya's bag is, right? right? But I think that those, those type of things, those moves, requires uh convincing higher ups right. do i believe that phil wants it yeah right do i believe that he can have a satya 
understand the ramifications on what will happen if they acquire it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is a three tier. Do, can they convince the uppers? Mm -hmm. Right. And this deal is going to be as mega as Fox and Disney. Oh, it would be. It yeah, would be. So I'm not. I'm not that saying that it can't happen. happen. I'm just right. saying the reason why I don't feel it will. Is I feel WB trying to drive the price up. So oh, my boy. thing is, they like, yo, Microsoft interested in this too. So what you gonna do? Like to me, that all this, this, this oh, they leak. Them like the Knicks? Yeah, I feel like this leak. <laughs> like you know how like every time LeBron's a free agent, and then the Knicks be like, yo, the Knicks were interested, and I'm just like, fam, you used to get the price up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't want to leave. Yeah, like don't get me wrong. Like the the part about it that I like is that Phil is shooting his shot. And yeah. you like that aggressiveness under the leadership like, when it's not Don Matrick. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 mean, I respect them going for it, and but keep I, still mind, think, hey, I still think WB just try to draw the price up, man. Yeah, and keep in mind that, you mm -hmm. know, there's a slim chance that Microsoft doesn't buy this, but if they buy this. Oh, it's going to be it's gonna uh, be crazy. You know what Sony dudes will do? What? Like right now, they it don't matter what Sony dudes going to do. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna be so extra. Yo, right There's now, two scenarios in life. It's never <laughs> happening. Microsoft is never going to do that. If it happens, then they're going to be like, it doesn't matter. They ain't going to make anything. <laughs> there, there is two scenarios in life where I'm extra. Like right. extra, extra. Like so extra, you guys right. can't contain me on Twitter that day. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> One of them is if Microsoft absolutely blows it out of the park on the July the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And the second one is that they buy Warner Brothers. Now, if they happen on the same day. <laughs> Listen, I, lo I love this you pie in the sky talk. Yeah. I'm just telling you, know, I've been around, bro. Like, like I've been yeah. around when, oh, Microsoft's going to buy EA. Microsoft's going to buy Steam. Yeah, you We've know what? Us, years. Though? I think that was us, though. I, man, I don't really think it was an open bid up for EA. <laughs> well, you remember them yeah, dumb, it, dumb, it, dumb it, on, it, it was just like blame rumors, like not actual. Yeah. True, like, true, true, true. And, and shout out to the letter of intent. Like, yeah, you know, no, absolutely. That that part is different. I give y'all the letter to intent. Okay, yes, that's real. I respect the move. I just gotta see it, man. Like, there's a lot of dudes trying to trying to get this sale off. So. You know, we'll see. I, I hope. Listen, yeah, you I think I'll be happy? Good. I'll be happy to be wrong. I'll bet Leo. Could you imagine how disgusting it will smell if uh, EA gets a hold of them? Yeah. Like, really, what will happen? Y'all might as well just pack it up. Yeah. Like, it's, you might as well just pack it up. Forget about how that quality of that Batman gonna be. Forget about what, who you used to know. Right. <laughs> you, you know, no, no, no. Let's Let me stop. read this super chat. This yeah. is perfect. I'm, I'm jumping one, but I'll go back mm -hmm. to the other one. Restored Hades with the two dollars super chat. Let's be honest. Microsoft is the lesser evil. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. out of the three. Out yeah, of the yeah absolutely. Yes, that's a fact. Yeah, absolutely, because we all scared to death if we go to Activision. We scared to death with EA. Oh, Activision and Bungie did. Yeah, we already see. But look, that's that's what I got. Everybody got anything else we can get up out of here? We got. Yeah, we got a couple super chats. Oh, so we get the super chat, sir. JD Gaming with the five dollars super chat. Think about all the times Microsoft didn't buy a team that they worked with. Bioware, Splash Damage, Cloud Giant, Cloud Gene, um, Iron Galaxy. They need to get WB to stop others. Yep. Especially well, they lost Iron Galaxy to uh whatchamacallit to Amazon. Yeah. And those are the people that were working on Killing. the Killer Instinct. So you see how a stagnated Killer Instinct got the moment that they got acquired by another uh, company. They can't allow that to continue. Like they can't let IPs they just bring back just die like that. I just yeah. personally feel like it would it would be different if I didn't think that I honestly think this is literally the perfect thing. Like Microsoft, this is one of those opportunities, especially if they can get like the Batman licensing. Yeah. I mean or it, it, it would be extremely and I personally I feel like Batman's ran its course. I would prefer them to let that licensing go and like get like Black uh Black Panther or something. Because I feel like we need a different hero than the one that's been used for like 15, 20 years. But Batman's extremely popular. So even if they got it, that would still be a Batman movie coming out, bro. Batman. No, nah, don't. Man, you need Batman. Like, it was one of those things. Yeah, Batman, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, all, that's all I have. Yeah. Uh, we got Perfect Shogun with the $2 super chat. Drop the bag, Satya. <laughs> Well, what is Cog doing? Cog is in there fighting with somebody. Even again, <laughs> we can't hear you. We yeah, we can't hear anything that you're saying. 
Oh, oh my bad, my bad. Nah, no. can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Who are you cursing out? Nah. <laughs> now, Lamarcus, he got his knees out. I just wanted to know. You know, what I'm he said God of War ain't happening. That's another one. I wanted the two for the price oh, of one. Knees. Just, I was getting the two for two for. <laughs> yeah, I want. I want both his knees. You know what's funny? Two knees special with a biscuit. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Cardi supposed. Cardi supposed to take the higher ground. He's supposed. Nah, to he us. he talking spicy in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't have a spicy. Talk, he covered that kid. I don't say it. Put it in the chat. You're not supposed to participate in the smoke. You're supposed to to maintain us. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. I'm not being professional, but yo, if you got them knees, you don't think that got to work. Like this is literally what you do. Put that super chat. Put that. Put that. Put your super chat money up if you don't take it. Yeah, I mean, and then we can honestly know that you're a man of your convictions, like your boy over here with the tattoo on his chest. Exactly. I'm a man of my convictions. I don't do the spicy talk. I want knees. I want bets. I want you put your life on the line. I want to make an example. <laughs> Anyway, I'm done. I'm done with my forces. Let's get it. We got the super chats. We caught up. Yeah, we're done. All right, let's get up out of here, man. All right. Um, new IRP poll with Phil Spencer's latest statements regarding Series X being held back by older Xbox platforms as a meme created by people who are too caught up in device competition. Do you agree that games should not be locked into having to buy a new device in order to experience it? The choices are a no. Phil is tripping, tripping. Game design will always be held back by the lowest common denominator. B, yes, the majority of games scale for PC already and still have the highest graphical fidelity. Or C, I don't care, both Series X and PlayStation 5 are damage controlling, they limitations to PC master race. Those are the choices. Please rock the vote when it goes up on Twitter. Salute to Lord Giuseppe Navaria, one of the best coders in the game. Splash damages on, came through, show love. A lot of retro talk, man. He was really phenomenal. Salute to him. We'll definitely try to get him back as things get closer, hopefully, with Splash Damage Next Project or when his uh, tactics comes out on uh, Series X. So salute to him and all that. But um, yeah, man, we got the super chats, and then you do your intros. Um, you want to get those real quick, Sov? Before I uh, we got Mariano Pumpa with the two dollars super chat. I'm all for aggressive cog, and then we have uh, <laughs> and we have Black what? Black Ronin. Black with Ronin. Five, with this five dollars super chat, Black Panther as a third person action adventure game would be mm. life giving. Yeah, that would be hot. I am lying. And we got Stephen Smith with the five dollars super chat. If Lamarcus doesn't have <laughs> these, how is he going to get more of what he's smoking? <laughs> but I guess uh, Amazon. I guess. <laughs> Just savage man. Leave the homie alone. I just want his knees though. Just bring them to me. <laughs> anyway, oh, Lord Addict, where can the five people find you, man? What you got going on, sir? You can find me eating these fries. No pizza. No. Pizza. no. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. Okay, step look, up. Man, look, man, it's four o'clock. It's my it's it's dinner time for yeah, me. All right. Yeah. Well, that's a fact. That's a fact. No doubt. You already know. Lord Sovereign, what's going on? Very spicy epic talk, man. Where, where can I find people find you? What you got going on? Chilling, man. Just just chilling this week, you know. Uh I gotta go to work a little bit. But uh mm -hmm. I'm actually I, I Friday, man, I've heard a lot of good things about Tsushima that I, you know, have me worried. So, side quests like which yeah, yeah i heard that i was like yeah. go, go, go talk, cherry so blossom time baby yeah, i'm a little more excited than i had been so i'm excited for that on friday paper mario as well on friday that's crazy yeah, i'm teasing them in chat i was like get that paper mario oh and, and, and by the way um next week i'm going to be dropping a few videos on halo and fable so definitely if you ain't subscribed to me on gaming attic you might want to go over there and do that mm -hmm. no doubt no doubt you already know lord king Fresh off that IOP crest, the IOP for life. Yeah, put them crest in the chat for put King. Put the man. crest in the chat for King. King. Man, it was for us all. Exactly. <laughs> I was uh, editing a video while I was uh, in uh, the, the, on the show today. Because <laughs> that video has to go up. Uh, I was trying to get that out for you guys yesterday, but only Realm members. Like, if, if, if y'all heard mm -hmm. uh, what I put up, um, y'all understand um it, it sounds a little bit like this and we can't get monetized for this because this is um this is mine so um, <laughs> so it, it sounds like uh mm -hmm. hold on let me get that for you mm -hmm. because this is this, it's fantastic I, i'm so proud of myself Yo. with how i made it sound mm -hmm. because it's mad uh mm -hmm. cheeky it's cheeky, cheeky. Like, 
Listen, guys. We're listening. Oh, where is that? Turn the beat up. Turn the beat around. You know what he sounds like? He sounds like that. Uh, uh, that Better Call Saul from uh, Breaking Bad. Yes. And I felt so happy and gleeful when I said, <laughs> like, <laughs> you won't see it unless you're a member of the realm. Uh, and all you members that are in the realm, I do salute you guys. So all you guys gave me strength when I was laying there on the table and getting tattooed for seven, for seven hours. hours. You know, um, Attic, Attic was riding with me the whole time. He's, he's like, damn, you still there? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. Yeah. I'm <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm taking pictures. I'm doing whatever. Uh, it was a real isolated situation because I wasn't able to bring anyone with me. Um, so you know, so for you for still able to get footage in there, dog. Yeah, yeah he he was he. Uh, listen, um, shout out to uh Pony Montana. Uh, his, uh, yeah, his joint is uh his Twitter is no his Instagram is P O N Y uh T A T. Two, the number two. Okay. Uh, go follow him on Instagram. Pony uh, tattoo. Yeah, to, okay. to a pony tattoo. Hmm. Um, that's funny. That's <laughs> I, I was gonna say the the yeah. fanboy reference with the vibes was like that's I'm a little. Yeah. <laughs> he watches the show, and and yeah, that's, that's, that's insane because mm -hmm. I sent him the link. He looked at the show, and he's a fan of the show, and he says, you know, salute to you guys. <laughs> so we'll be working in the future. With yo, you. geeky nerd said, my guy King Lockett exclusives behind a paywall. <laughs> Oh, yo, yo, listen, listen. Exactly that. You will not see the nipple unless you pay for that. So, okay. y'all talk about OnlyFans? Well, yeah. hey, man. Diago said, oh, where, yeah. he said nah. where the video came? Okay? He still, he, he just did the tattoo Saturday. He was in there for seven, eight hours. My man had to get his rest on. He then, he going to put up the post. He doing the editing of the video. So, keep in mind, he did this yesterday. He just did it. Yeah, eight yeah. hours, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Give him that. Now you figure worst case scenario tomorrow maybe it'll be ready. Or? Yeah, well, it'll definitely be up tomorrow. Um, I have a uh, uh, a box coming in um, mm -hmm. from sideshow tomorrow, so I'll be doing that video uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I have two shows to do, so Monday we'll be doing a last of a super super deep dive, mm -hmm. very intricate stuff, and on mm -hmm. Tuesday we'll be doing an unboxing for the mm -hmm. winner of the eight hundred dollars. They got the statue from. Uh, Dolph Channel, uh, Dolph Castle X. Mm -hmm. uh, I told you guys, listen, y'all can go over there. They're giving away a lot of stuff once a month, and one of the winners got eight hundred dollars in spec fiction money, mm -hmm. and they they already got they 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 uh, statue. Yeah. So they, I just got one request, King. Yes. One request. It's a very important quest. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get rid of that Mario next week, man. No, yo, it's me. mad creepy, son. Yo, yo. So you, next week it's gonna be right. The but yeah, yeah, I don't like how every week it get right closer. Hat next yo, week. what's nuts is I didn't move. Him. Don't see that we <laughs> we got in the show. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't touch him. Uh, <laughs> he, was at, he was over there behind the box, and then he, then I looked and I was like, oh, Attic, he's coming for you. So, <laughs> so, so, until until that Mario is removed, this is all you're gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yo y'all stupid anyway man so that's that's it for the cakes so hopefully it'll it'll be up soon man yo salute again everybody came through the chat and, and everybody again again some boot lamarcus you know it's all funny games brother we just having fun all that good stuff but um yeah man tune into next week as we get closer we're gonna have some more fun stuff going on anybody anything got anything else to say before we buy in i was just giving them a little preview of that Oh, exclusive OnlyFans nipple. Show me a collarbone. You get a little collarbone. You got collarbone <laughs> action. <laughs> get the rest. Get the rest. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, like I said, thanks for stopping with us because we had Ubisoft going on at the same time. Everybody enjoy your Sunday. And on that note, we don't listen oh, to you. What? My God, I got to send you something. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we out. <laughs> Yo, you are All about right. to. I'm Lord King David of Iron Lords Podcast. And we're bringing to you an exciting new giveaway. This giveaway is like none other. We'll be giving away an Xbox Series X. <laughs> That's right, you heard me right. The brand new console launching from Microsoft this year. Well, this is how you're able to be part of that giveaway. There's two ways to get your name thrown in the hat for the raffle. One, become a member of the realm. That's hit that join button, hit it, hit that join button. 
you hit that join button down at the bottom and you can become a member. And also, another way is by becoming a Patreon member. So you can be part of the realm as well. Now, this is brought to you by Cat Daddy Fat Stacks, a member and lord of the realm. A very generous person that's in our community. And this community is beautiful. So remember, you can have one entry by hitting that join button and becoming a member of the realm. And also, you can have another entry by being a Patreon. Now, you said, King, what if I'm a member of both? Well, your name gets thrown in the hat two times. So please, like, follow, and subscribe. Join or become a Patreon member or become both. And your name is in the hat to get that Xbox Series X. That's the who did that for you sweepstakes. This is wonderful. This is something that I'm sure that you will enjoy. Oh, man.